All right, so welcome on to episode one of the sort of self found build. And which build is it gonna be? And let's look at the polls, right? So poll number one, the one on YouTube, um, had Vitality Witchers at 22%, I Reckoning Satan at 40%, and Death Knight Blader at 38%. And then what we did on like Discord and the stream, um, also had like our Reckoning in first place, and then Richards and DK like a little further down. So we are gonna play a I Reckoning Sentinel. Um, <clears throat> let's do that. So we did create a new character, right, as always. This is a completely fresh account, right? We've like reset basically all the blueprints, everything. This is as if you were like basically like emulating uh, you guys' experience when you're like completely new to the game and you've just installed the game for the very first time. I mean, including Forgotten Gods, though, of course. So we just called us like, I don't know, Red Pie Spin or something, right? Like a hardcore character. Uh, I mean, feel free to play softcore if you're new to this game. I would say softcore is indeed generally better to well, learn the game with. Um, but we're gonna like play hardcore from the content, right? And uh, yeah, let's just enter the game. All right, so we are in Davos Crossing. Still drawn. You can speak to this guy. You don't have to though. Um, and then let's just move outside here. And then there's gonna be like a You're small the you will need thing that you can do to like get a little bit of ahead of the XP curve here, right? You can like turn the camera. Yes, you can turn the camera. Uh, like this, and then you can pick up this note from outside the prison because Grim Dawn logic is flawless. And you can click on that, right? And you're gonna like get experience because in this game you get experience from like reading lore, right? So you just have to like kill these guys on the bridge, and we are basically level two, unless this guy like kills these me. All right. Uh, at level two, you can choose your masteries, right? Um, we're gonna play a sentinel. So sentinel is oathkeeper and occultist. We're gonna start out with the oathkeeper because we're gonna. Um, actually, Sentinel early game is like bad either way. Are we gonna like, actually start off with Oathkeeper? Maybe just Octotus. Maybe I actually play like some Raven first and then like I Reckoning later. Because like early game Oathkeeper leveling just sucks hard, right? Maybe we actually do that. Alright, I think Oathkeeper, I mean, Octotus is better early game than Oathkeeper. Like, we want to play this skill, right? I am Reckoning, but also, like, it's 25 points deep. So you can't quite get there yet. If you uh, don't want to play Sentinel, right, for our Reckoning, if you want to play, like, any other class secondary, feel free to just, like, start out with Oathkeeper and play, for example, Shield Throw, or just, like, pick your other mastery first and, like, pick whatever uh, skill you want to do, right? For example, if you want to play a Shield Breaker, you can play, like, uh, Demolitionist that start off with like a uh, like water cocktail, right? That's like a very great leveling skill. Um, or you can do soldier and like start off with force wave, right? If you want to do a warlord, for example. Um, but yeah, since Oathkeeper sucks so much, honestly, for early game leveling, like for the early levels, I'm just gonna like play Octotus and like put points of familiar, which is a pet, yes. And generally, I'm not known to play pet builds, but familiar is just really, really, really strong early game, right? So you just summon him, right? And you also can use the pet attack skill to like direct your pet around. Um, if you also are interested in pets in general, you can also like right click your pets up here, set to aggressive to normal defensive, right? This will basically like increase or decrease the aggro radius of the pet around you, um, which can be, well, useful. And also let's take a look at my key bindings real quick, just to show you because like people have been, uh, well, asking about this every now and then, right? These are my key bindings here. I'm gonna just like scroll them down real quick here. And you guys can take notes if you would like to, right? You can like pause the video here if you want to like know how I'm playing uh, this game. Also, I have a German keyboard, so like some of these might be in like German. This is basically like control. This is key, like control key here, right? Uh, these I don't really really use though that much. Yeah, this is basically my setup. Uh, also, when it comes to interface. I have desktop enabled here. I'm gonna probably actually like disable the health bars. I mean, not health bars on pets, but uh, monster health values. This one here, otherwise it gets a little bit too cluttery. And you don't really need this uh, until you're like later when you're like fighting bosses, I feel like. Uh, you can also enable auto loot. And yeah, that's pretty good. I have also the stuff enabled here. Uh, this is my setup, basically. All right, let's actually play the game. Yo, Aunt Crusader, welcome on, welcome on. <laughs> Yo, Naomi, welcome, welcome. Dead game. Nobody's streaming this. Ah, the Grim Dawn is far from dead. Come on. Just because, like, 
sometimes nobody is streaming. It's far from dead, right? We are doing community seasons and all that stuff, so... The community is very much alive. So which build won the poll? This is gonna be a R Reckoning Sentinel. Like a fire R Reckoning Sentinel. Alright, there are a couple of places where you can also go to this early game, like uh, this early on, in Lower Crossing. That pr do provide you like more additional like uh, lore notes. Um, there are also like three weapons you can grab early game, right? Like for example, Francis's gun. Um, <clears throat> some people say like Francis's gun is like amazing, blah blah. You should use it. It's like good only if you're like gonna do a fire caster and if you're gonna do like an offhand, like a level ten offhand that you're gonna find later. If you're not doing that, then I feel like um, because like disable whites, they're like absolute garbage in this game. And always like enable double rares, right? Um, let's put more points to the Raven, which is, it should just like carry us. Um, generally though you should like put points into the mastery bar and uh, like your skill, right, your main skill. Um, kind of equally, like at least one point to the mastery bar, one point to the skill, and then like the third point depending on like where you wanna, like what you wanna push more. Um, it also like kinda depends whether your skill is gonna like use energy or not, or like gonna use a lot of energy or not. If your skill is like using too much energy early on, then you might not wanna um, put too many points into your like main ability too soon, right? Because otherwise you're just gonna run out of energy. Uh, if you like playing the Raven though, I mean you summon him once and then you don't need energy for him, so it's fine, totally fine. Over here you have the Havel's Great Sword, right? Just from this house. The Havel's Great Sword. Havel's Great Sword is generally I would say like the best weapon that you can get early game. Uh, like out of these three weapons, weapon number three being over here in this house. Uh, the other two are kinda only like good for fire or cold casters maybe, or this one could also be used on like night blades, I guess. Like cold night blades, but yeah. I feel like even on night blades, like just having the damage of a two-hander. I mean, yeah. We're not playing veteran right now. I'm not sure if we should. Um, and veteran is a little bit e like harder. Normal is gonna be a little bit quicker. Um, it's a build. It'll be fine either way, right? Veteran... You don't have to play Veteran, right? It, you do get a little bit more XP in Veteran, but also the game is harder on Veteran, which does help you to learn the game, I think. But to... Um, like, to make progress, it's not really, like, that amazing, right? I do have other SSF, like, playthroughs where I play on Veteran. This one's gonna be on Normal, I guess. Um, I mean, once we hit elite, it's like gonna be the same anyway. Like, there's no elite veteran or like ultimate veteran. Uh, over here, let's grab the. Uh, let's put another point here. Let's grab the rift gate, because you do wanna like have ideally like around 100 HP at the very least per level. Usually more than that. Um, a hardcore would say like 120 is usually like the minimum. But I mean, level four, it's gonna be fine not having that amount of HP yet. Yo, yeah, squares, welcome on. What kind of SSF build is this gonna be? It's gonna be a. Fire erecting sentinel. I will provide links um, soon in the chat as well. And if you're watching this on YouTube, of course, in the description below on the video, there's gonna be like Grim Tools links so you can like follow the build there as well. I'll probably like post the first one like once I'm about to head into the Oathkeeper class, which might not be too soon actually, because our reckoning in, I, in Act 1 is. Not that easy to get to, right? I mean, you need what, like, what was it, 25 points in the mastery bar? And then, like, another, like, basically 16 points on the skill, so it's 41 points. 41 points. I mean, 41 points, like, what level... You could play it in Act 1, actually, it's like... Hmm. Maybe you're gonna, like, play it, like, before Warden Krieg or something. Like, the boss of Act 1. Yo, Super Saiyan Housewife, welcome in, welcome in. And Gildar, welcome, welcome. <laughs> We're MTX. This game any good? Yo, mega fair welcome. And Nick Max here as well. Hello, hello. Unfollowed because of pets. <laughs> yeah. You do have to direct the guy sometimes though, like otherwise he's a little pepega. I mean, pet AI in ARPGs is generally not always that amazing, right? It's like sometimes okay, sometimes decent, sometimes bad. Uh, in this game, I feel like it's also okay-ish, but sometimes they will get like stuck behind some corners like this, and then they can't, can't like shoot. It's more noticeable on ranged pets like the Raven than it is on melee pets. 
Um, but yeah. You do have pet tag and you do have like the ability to like change the well aggro radius of your pet at least. So there's some control. I never mentioned it's an early game item. Wait, which one? Alright, let's kill Kazok here. Alright, I mean, we're like doing 10 damage and the Raven is like doing a bazillion damage, but that's fine. Also, I could have like leveled it up before actually doing this like, boss right? What am I doing? Um, so, we did the first quest basically, but there's also a shrine down here which you don't want to miss. And these devotion shrines will open up basically your third class in a way, right? You have like the two classes that you choose level 1 and 10 or later, you can also delay choosing the second class. Um, and then you have devotions, right? Um, this is like your third class basically, kind of like pass of 3 from 2e maybe in a way. And you basically need... Like, like you, you can pick what is highlighted and you cannot pick what is not highlighted, right? For example, now these are going to be highlighted. And why are these getting highlighted? Because you have to look at the affinity requirement and the complete constellation bonus, right? So like these, this one for example needs one red, and this one will give you one red. This will give you one blue. So like these are the crossroads which like enable all these colors, right? You can do this. You can also have an undo button up here. This undo button won't work once you like close the window though, then you will have to go to the respec spirit guide and respec there. So. Yeah, we're gonna start out with crossroads because being a fire build, there's also a search bar, right? Like you can just like search for fire damage, and you will see like the nodes that are highlighted in red that will deal fire damage. So most of them are like around this corner, right? So you wanna go like to, for example, Uzin's Torch as an end game, uh, or like uh, later into the game, um, devotion, right? Which needs red and green, right? So you kind of like already know. Okay, I need like red and green, and then you're also gonna know. I mean, the game doesn't really tell you, but it kind of. Uh, like, you have to know kind of that it is absolutely mandatory to always pick these, like, um, minus number percent resistance reduction devotions, right? Like, for example, Eldritch Fire, Port Fire, or Chaos, right? And since we're gonna play Fire, we're gonna, like, obviously pick Solar's Witchblade, right? Um, until we get there, right? This needs four red and six green. We're gonna, for example, I think, pick Jackal. Uh, yeah, Jackal is, like, always great early game. Uh, you might think, like, why the fuck are you not picking Flame Torrent and, like, Fiend, right? Uh, we can maybe later, like, after Jackal. But Jackal's 6% total speed here is just always very great and speeds up the game a lot. At least if you don't talk as much as I do right now. Oh, Slip Tank, Poison Dagger. True. That's a little bit further down the line, though, but yeah. Slip Tank is actually also a decent, like, item for Poison Bolts early on, I guess. Let's just make the Raven kill even more stuff. The Raven is rather on the single target side than like AoE side though. It kind of like basically one shots everything at this level. <clears throat> but the AoE is not the greatest, right? It has like what, two projectiles and that's it. So it can't like hit ever more than two enemies. So it is nice to like hit enemies yourself as well, but at least. Yo, Axonios, welcome on. So we're gonna like try to pick up a... Like, AoE ability maybe as well, aside. Like, outside the Raven. Or like, alongside the Raven, rather. Also, there are a couple of like, quest mobs, right? That you can do from now on. Like, a side quest mob here. This is gonna be like a mob of a side quest. And there's gonna be a couple others as well. I should probably go back to John Bourbon though and complete the very first quest before like venturing too much further here. Now the game also has these like monster totems that honestly at this level if they spawn like this early are a little bit ridiculous. Because they give you like a shit ton of XP gear and I don't know, like, I, I always feel like they feel just broken in this area, like they shouldn't be in this area. Anyway, uh, let's do it, right? It's gonna be like an initial challenge thing. You like spawn monsters, you kill monsters, you get loot, you get XP, right? And this one is gonna give us, I think, two levels, yeah. Jump from 6 to 8 right away. Sure, why not? Seems balanced, right? 
Um, all right, and then we put more points into maybe some AOE soonish. I wonder what we're gonna use for AOE until like our reckoning. Maybe just like play Raven all the way and like I don't know. I'm not quite sure honestly. Also, when it comes to attribute points, right? I haven't allocated these at all yet. You kind of just wanna put at least in a build like this, I would say all points of physique, except for the points that you need to like put into cunning or spirit to like equip gear. Or then, but since we're gonna be an occultist, right? As a secondary, we're not gonna have any spirit issues, I think. I mean, you're not you're not really gonna like use an offhand for our reckoning unless you're playing cyclone and lightning, but we're not gonna do that, so. So yeah, we can just like happily put everything in physique and maybe cunning if we do need more cunning to like equip a sword, for example. Just scam the game with totems. Playing pets, you better not let Illuminator seal us. Yeah. You will instantly unfollow. <laughs> that de a creature I need some time. All right. So I we did the first quest, right? Let's talk to Barnabas and Kasparov. Kasparov is over here. You need like around, I think, four crystals Welcome to complete this quest, right? And then you need five scrap to complete the other one. We have one. Well, that is not enough, right? We can pick up some other quests though, and I can show you real quick where the. Oops. Where the lady is, where you can respect your skills and also devotion points, if you so desire, right? Gonna go dual wield or two hand? Probably dual wield, but it will depend also like on what items I find. All right, so you have to like talk to her first, exit her conversation and then talk to her again. It's a little confusing, honestly. But yeah, you can like take out points here, take out points here, right? You could even like take out points here. Everything costs only iron bots, except for devotions, which also cost a Aether Crystal on top, right? And the price will increase, however, it won't ever like... It has like, I think, a cap at some point, I don't know. I've never really like had any iron bit problems with respecting. But yes, it's gonna be more and more, like, increasingly more expensive. So yes, you can test out basically as much as you want to, to a certain degree, right? Um, at some point there is gonna be, like, an iron bit problem. But in this game you can just, like, farm items and, like, sell items and then you're gonna get your iron bits back, basically. There was an Amai in Forgotten Gods that modifies our reckoning. Yeah, the Rift Claw Slicer, right? We're gonna probably go into like Forgotten Gods right after Act 1. You can go into Forgotten Gods, or like rather after Act 1, right in Grimdon, you can choose to either go into Act 2, which is like across the bridge to the west, or you can like port to Forgotten Gods right away. And I think we're gonna do the latter, because I want to get an item that is in that area, right? Um, also, like with the Raven, I shouldn't like do that much uh, like trash clearing. Honestly, I cannot have like good AOE. It's still better than like pretty much anything that Woodkeeper offers. I feel like, but yeah. Yo, full of pet work, huh? uh, Our reckoning Sentinel is what we're gonna do. Just Act One Raven because Act One Raven is uh, pretty much better than anything that Oathkeeper has to offer in Act One. I feel like at least. I mean, you can also do Buckler and Aegis Throw, I guess. It's maybe not too bad, but I think Raven is just better. And speaking of Raven, right, you get the Carver's Conjuring Bone here, right? This is the. I mean, we got it like from a corpse next to the side boss here in Southern Hollow. And yeah, that's why. Give you like more damage to pets, and will also spawn another pet whenever you attack. So it's also like attack, like it has a chance to spawn a pet when you attack, right? And the easiest way to proc that is gonna be like with bloody pox, right? Which is gonna be like another ability that we're gonna like use here in a second. So yeah, this one over here.
<laughs> Yo, Flicker, welcome on. I mean, you're, you're new to my channel, right? So. This dead game. Ah, there, there are new players. I don't know. I see new players, like, pretty much every time I stream, honestly. Oh, the game is still great. <laughs> oh, you're new as well? Alright. Welcome in, guys. Welcome, welcome. Also, I mean, boots, right? I mean, ideally, you want movement speed, of course, right? What else would you want? Yeah, you kind of want to do, like, Raven into Pox, I think. It's probably a little bit better to like not max out the raven right away like I did because I feel like it's like overcutting stuff right now. But I mean it's very chill, right? You just like stand there and let the raven attack. Uh... Alright, let's grab some bloody fox points here. And, I mean, we might as well just like go full degenerate mode and like go full pets right? For now at least. Spawn another pet. And we're just using bloody pox basically to like have a chance, like a higher chance to spawn this Carver's Conjuring Bone pet right as well. <coughs> because, uh... What it like ticks and sp spreads, right? Like you put it on an enemy, it's like point and click, right? Like this. And it's gonna like tick every second. Um, also, like spread to others around it. It doesn't deal any damage right now because it's only like one point. <coughs> and also, the first node doesn't really like do that much. The second node, the wasting, does like way more damage. But. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's just like used to have like a better chance to hit an enemy because like every single spell tick would also like count as a hit in this game. And if you have this which is like chance on hit, right, you want hits. Which is also like spell ticks, so that's fine. Bias left time. Oh, Alright. <laughs> Imagine picking up slip time. Oops. Uh, now in Foggy Bank, there are three spots where a vendor can spawn, right? Number one here, number two here, and number three around the corner here as well. <clears throat> so let's go and grab uh, the vendor, now I'm blind. Wait, how am I just blind? What the fuck? What am I doing? Am I high? The fuck? I like that you put together videos of doing leveling guys without local or the ultimate pass. I have no idea how to do it though. After your first tune, it's local robust. Yeah. If I wasn't streaming, I wouldn't do it, be doing this either, honestly. <laughs> but I think it's like kind of fun every now and then. Like, for example, like in a seasoned environment, right? Like, where everybody starts fresh. I think it's fine. It's fun then. If you're high, you better share. Alright, where do we go back and do the quest finally? I feel like 5 scrap. Yeah, we can go back now. I mean, you need 5 scrap for the quest, right? Don't repair this bridge. Or, like, not normal at least. Um, but 3 is enough because we can we can just. Oh, yeah, high on screen rotating. Indeed, indeed. Holy shit. <clears throat> Let's go back to Devil's Crossing. And we have some people to talk to now, right? We have, for example, done this side quest here because we've, like, killed the 3 zombies. And this will give us scrap. Then we could also like buy scrap from the vendor here. Or talk to the other vendor that we just rescued and also buy scrap from him. Yeah, even two, right? You could even buy two scrap there. And then oh yeah, I already talked to Fildos, he also like gives you a scrap out. <coughs> Let's just buy one scrap here. Sorry, holy shit.
All right. Um, we have fine scrub. Right, there we go. Fine scrub for Dusk Wars. Let's go down into the cellar. Five scrubs. <laughs> Five scrubs. And why do we want to do this quest? I mean, you want to do this quest because, like, first of all, part of the main quest line, and second of all, because you want to get more inventory space, right? I mean, who doesn't love inventory space? And uh, yeah, this quest will give you more inventory space. Choking on pet build, yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. So we can just like walk through this because like I know that like pets are gonna either kill the stuff later or if they don't if it doesn't, I mean whatever, right? I guess I could also like try to put in more points here, maybe for better area. To at least kill the trash without having the pets to attack them. Like without having the pets have to attack them. Doesn't really do much there. Like bloody pox is just like the base ability is kind of kind of meh. It's it's great when you have the transmitter and you actually do damage, or like when you have wasting right, and you also actually do damage. But until then, it's kind of kind of mediocre. Should probably like, put more points to the head on instead, or like just down to the bar. You like big banks, you cannot deny. <laughs> Let's also put the other pet to aggressive here. Uh, will this build use faction slash merchant item later on? Like what to use for merchants until you farm your endgame items? <coughs> uh, probably not, at least not like any that matter really. Um, it might use like one or two items, sure, but like from from factions as well. But probably not some of those that are like exclusive to each other. And also, even if, then they probably won't matter a lot because like the build defining gear is not uh, like not vendor gear anyway. <laughs> Yo, cheap shot workman. Alright, I mean the bosses lie like super quick at least, right? Like insanely quick. Alright, let's go back here and talk to Captain Bourbon. Oh, so we got the jackal total speed, right? 6% total speed means 6% attack speed, well. casting speed and movement speed, which is great. Obviously, you wanna go quick, right? I mean, you should go slow in this game, honestly though. Like you should actually like take your time and like Read lore and find secrets. Like you shouldn't play this as quickly as I am right now. Also, how the fuck did I not kill Milton Hart? He's like in White Mire, right? I actually like went back to him. I mean, uh, I like went pa pa past him. That's what it's called, right? Past him. <clears throat> also, you might wonder like, what are, what is this stuff right here? These are components, and you can put them on your gear, right? Please always put components on your gear because not putting components on your gear is basically criminal. Uh, you can also put, for example, a Searing Ember into your offhand and then cast small little fireballs. There's like an upgraded version of this later that you can also use. Or you can also like put uh, Chill Steel here, for example, and like put um, use Ice Spikes, right? So you can like use fireballs or Ice Spikes depending on like which enemy you're facing, for example. Um, also, yeah, Polished Emeralds are pretty good like early on, on like rings. Head armor, chest. They're also like good for everything because it's just like raw stats. Like raw stats are pretty decent early game. Um, you can also like use Bristly Fur if you want to. Uh, like on, I don't know, anywhere else, right? Like those, for example. And you, you can do that because you can, first of all, um, remove components from gear very soon. We can't do it yet, but very soon there's like a quest attached to it. Or rather, we already have the quest, right? We have the quest to find the apprentice, and once we find the apprentice, the apprentice can do that for us. And, 
Well, what's the other reason? Because these components drop in abundance. At least like early game, the early game components, like you're not gonna use them later anyway. Like for example here, I fucked up, right? Like put a polished emerald in dust, I mean I can have another one, right? It's fine. Uh, at least for now, that's fine. Later on you wanna like craft components as well at the smith, which we're not uh, which we haven't rescued yet. But also very soon. And those components you might wanna like salvage, right? Because those are a little bit more uh, like expensive to craft, right? But these early components, like, just use them, it's fine. What is he playing, Tets? <laughs> Not starting Oathkeeper? Oathkeeper is kinda cancer to start, to be honest. Like, it's what? Ages of Many here or something? Ages of Many here, RF hybrid? I mean, you can do it, sure. I did also like a video on like how to start as an Oathkeeper, right? It's, it's doable, certainly. But I feel like it's just slow compared to like pretty much anything else. Better than pets. <laughs> I mean, it's not really better than pets, but you think pets are disgusting, so I guess it's better for you than pets. Yeah. I mean, I do also think that pets are kind of disgusting, but Like, not disgusting as in pets are disgusting in real life, but like pets in ARPGs are rather a disgusting playstyle. But also kinda like hardcore friendly to be honest. Age of Sentinel is such a madness. I mean, that's a viable endgame build. It's just early game, not very good. Alright, Shambler. Just kill him. Yeah, maybe we should have played veteran, but I don't know. Maybe we should have played veteran, like pets are just disgusting. At least the raven is. <laughs> Yo, Atakan, welcome on. What the hell, you're playing pets? No, it's just a, it's just an illusion. This is actually our reckoning. Believe me. Oh, hello. Yeah, hopefully not for too long, because I'm gonna... When can I play this, right? 25 plus 1 is... It's technically not even level 10, right? I could play it right now. Should we already switch now? That's gonna be like 1 point, right? That's gonna suck, right? You played some V-Rising. Has proper combat, unlike Valheim. I watched uh, like 10 minutes of Core Carnage today, or like was it yesterday? And I saw him like chop wood, and I was like, what is this, like, new world or what? Um, oh yeah, Angrim, right? There's two, two blacksmiths. It honestly doesn't really matter too much which you choose, like which one you choose early game. They have like slightly different like gear that you craft, but only like that matter early. Um, for end game though, you kind of always want to like pick Angrim, like an ultimate difficulty at least. Because um, he has like the better smith crafting completion bonus. Right? Like whenever you craft anything that is not a component, like for example when you like craft pants or so on, <clears throat> then you will get a crafting bonus depending on the smith and also like a little bit dependent on the RNG, right? Like every smith has three bonuses and you're gonna like get one of out of the three at random. Uh, yeah, sure, does it even have pet stats? Pog? Uh, just put one in Oathkeeper, so that we know we're gonna play an Oathkeeper. In case we forget for some reason. <clears throat> you like your Pyro though? Glad you like it. Wait, you're playing a Pyro? Hey, what kind of Pyro is that? Oh, you're playing the the Hellhound League Item Pyro. Right, 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 right. The item that basically like makes the Hellhounds into grenades, like walking grenades. 
<clears throat> All right, we could now actually like pick fiend if we wanted to, right? Like you don't need a third point really at this point. Um, you could pick fiend now, or you just pick spider to get to Eldritch fire sooner, or you try to go for Ron's crown. Actually, I think we're gonna pick fiend this time. I haven't done this in a long time, so let's pick fiend this time. That's a season 4 item. The one Thomas talking about is a season 3 item. Like, you can really play it if you want right now. Are we gonna do Duo Wield Our Reckoning? Yes, that's the plan. I mean, obviously not right now. We're playing some pets until we can get, like, a kill. We can actually, like, play it. But once we can play it, uh, reasonably at least, then we're gonna play Our Reckoning, yes. I need to check when you can, like, at which level you can craft the dual wheel relic there. And also, like, what you need to craft it. Because I might not be able to, like, craft it right away, and then we have to, like, play two handed, which I guess is fine as well. But, yeah. Obligatory season 4 when? Oh, the summer. Coming to you the summer. What I think about Impfire? Oh, you mean an R Reckoning? Well, I'll be. It might be actually pretty good, right? Alright. <coughs> Especially on dual build. I feel like on two hand, Torrent is probably better, or like equally good at least. I mean, Torrent is like more damage on itself, but it doesn't stack as much as Impfire does, I was doing it. Yeah, I might have to actually like, think about this real quick, because like Imp. Yeah, Imp might be really strong, honestly. For dual wielding, at least. Alright, for these guys, we can like use Ice Spike, for example, right? That's why it's kind of like cool to have like Fireball and Ice Spike like early game. You can like switch between the two, depending on like what kind of enemy you're fighting, right? Because like some of these zombies, like these fire zombies, have like insane fires. I mean, my Raven's doing lightning damage anyway, so it's kind of whatever. But. So if we're gonna do like dual building, we need like decent one-handers, and I feel like I only have... I mean, this one is I guess fine, level 18. Should also like stop picking up yellow now. I have like all slots covered with the yellow at least, so we don't really need more yellow items. Yellow items are honestly just like green items for the most part, just trash in this game. So I'm not gonna like bother looking at them anymore. Yeah, yeah it, it might like hit twice, even for dual wielding, right? These totems can be a little sketchy sometimes, right? But I mean, we have pets, right? We have pets. Uh, let's go back and sell real quick. <clears throat> the same as Crate saying patch at the end of the summer? No, 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 certainly earlier than that, I would say. I mean, who knows though, who knows, but maybe it's gonna be a Crate summer. Alright, we need um, anything that has either attack speed or fire damage from it. I feel like attack speed is probably even more important, right? Even like buy something maybe, right? Uh, attack... Speed. Superior for Lycra like should do, right? I 
I mean, that is like once we actually need to buy one though. Like, we don't really need to buy one right now. Alright. Hey, look what we found. Headhunter's Trophy. This one has Life Leech. I mean, that's gonna be actually amazing. Holy shit, what is this RNG? Yes. This has no attack speed, no fire damage. This has fire damage, but also no attack speed. They kind of both suck, but oh well. So I have a Shamans of Celerity here, which is casting speed. Sucks, right? This one has attack speed, it's pretty decent actually. Uh, let's put like, I don't know. I mean, we can also like put nothing there, but now it's fine as well. <coughs> Yo, Mega Vank Pokemon. Yeah, SF means it's also found. What do you want? Now they're Rene, right? I mean, you can choose to kill them or not. Depends, like, if you wanna, like, do a small side dungeon guaranteed, or if you wanna, like, find a key for it yourself. Uh, I guess we can do it, right? We can, like, do the side dungeon, why not? Let's sign with the traitor for now. Feels weird, man. Good there. So self vegan, yeah, pretty much. Okay, uh, we're level 15, right? Let's actually talk to the smith, right? Now, the smith can't craft a dual wielding relic yet. However, Devil's Crossing has the Blade Sworn Talisman. Okay, level 25. Oh boy, that's gonna take a while. Um, I don't have a 200, do I? I mean, these are gonna be trash level 25, right? Yeah. Might as well just sell them again. Honestly, I just want a, like, scrap map of Electra to you. It doesn't even have a prefix, what the hell. There we go, superior of Electra to at least. Right, something like that. Let's pick it up. And let's try how bad it feels right now to not play pets. Actually, before we respec, let me give you a link though to the slang already set up. Can't craft anything good. Wait, can I? Can you craft this early? Like a weapon or what? Implements. What is an implement? What? Oh, that's, an, that's, that's a dagger. Never mind. And you could like play brutal great arcs, I guess. Or like enchanted, like these enchanted axes here. But honestly, they need scrap. I need scrap. Like I need scrap to repair the bridge later, right? Like it's gonna be fine. Pierce hone swords. I None. There's not lost epoch. We're not honing anything here, are we? All right, let's get rid of these like pets, right? Forty-one points should be enough. It is. Alright, and uh, we can even put another point into, say, our movement ability, Virus Might. Okay, we can even like put some additional fire damage on this, sure, why not. And we are basically ready and set. I, I do wanna probably actually go for Imp though, already, instead of the I don't think that I just was using right. Oh yeah, I, I went back right. I have like gear at the 
Maybe I also have like a better weapon lying around there. Right? And we can like put, I don't know, new ability here. The virus might. You want to look out for gloves that have attack speed like these ones, for example, right? Very good. Um, like you basically just want attack speed, right? Attack speed and well, ideally flat fire damage, right? Or like percent elemental damage is also fine, sure. Alright, my weapon kinda sucks, but it's gonna be fine, right? It'll be fine. I mean, okay, we just one shot everything over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the fuck? I guess it's normal and not veteran, right? Now, as I mentioned earlier, right, like energy can become somewhat of a problem if you like put too many points into your main image ability this early when you don't have like proper energy regen yet. Actually, can we fix it with like easy points to to Viper? Does it not only does it also like have reach? Yeah, right, the second node. Oh yeah, you should get Viper right away. I mean Jackal is fine first and then Viper for the leech, I think. For the energy leech. Just to make it like you know, a little bit less tedious with the leech, like with the energy. And you're you're gonna like have to pick uh, pick uh, Viper at some point anyway, right? It's really really amazing for both of us. Farming major rings is crappy. I know a person who did 500 Tomb of the Heretic runs last season. Only to get... Well, he was looking for like two Shooter of Rings. And it took him five, literally 500 runs to get two of them. That was fun. For him, I guess. Yo, Flames, welcome on. Alright, we're gonna like have to use some mana pots every now and then, I guess. But it's fine, I mean, that's why they're in the game. You can also just buy them, they're really cheap. No need to like be stingy with buying like mana pots, energy pots. Uh, they actually also... Really quick, just make like another link for the... Like level 15 Eye of Reckoning here as well. Alright. Alright, also go down to the cellar because we have the side quest to find the apprentice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Probably go back real quick because I got another devotion point and I could get the um, Viper devotion now, right? Also, oh yeah, uh, keep in mind to pick up like three of those fabrics, right? In the abandoned waterfront. This needs only one. Uh, oh yeah, it's fine, I guess, right? Yeah. Alright, this is the node you need, right? 15% chance to leech energy and also to like absorb en uh, like energy from any spells. That's gonna hopefully like take care of uh, your energy regen for now. Could buy a metal. Yeah, you could also buy a metal, that's true. Like, there's some metals that like, give you XP as well. I mean, pretty much all of these early game metals do, right? So we should, should like, certainly buy a metal. And they all kind of suck, though. What the fuck? This one's too expensive. So, what you want to look out for here is, like, either a metal that has, like, plus skills to whatever you're using, or just something that has, um, 
like resistance is not like for example this one I guess is probably fine. Alright. Why put our reckoning kinda sucks? It only deals like 20% weapon damage. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't really help that much, I guess. <laughs> it's true. Cause like all like yeah, if you use something like Viper Lich, um, like Energy Lich, it will be scaled down by whatever number your weapon damage has. And it doesn't stack really either, right? It's still better reach than like better energy regen than nothing, but it still kinda sucks, right? Your Presidian workman. I mean, you're gonna like pick Viper at some point either way. The AD res reduction as well. I mean, you can like use Virus Might, I guess, but it's like a low chance. Kinda. I mean, you will still have to use Pots, I guess, so well. It's fine. I mean, other than that, what do you have accessible to you in Act 1? There really isn't anything that you can do, right? Or is there? Oh, there is actually. Presence of Virtue. Right? Presence of Virtue gives you energy regen. So these passes, right, I like to put them on your second bar, I mean, you, should, you should as well. And then you activate them once, right, let's like a toggle, and then you will have, well, whatever the skill gives you, like, actively, passively, right? Like, offensive ability, chance of internal trauma and bleeding, energy regen and physical retaliation, which we're not gonna care about, but the rest is awesome. Cactoplasm? The problem with Ectoplasm is, uh, well, you don't get it in Act 1, right? You need to go to Act 2 or 7 to get it. Like, you can't get it in Act 1. It doesn't drop in Act 1. That is kind of the problem. I mean, I think this is fine right now. Like, you have pots, you have energy regen from Presence of Virtue, and you have, uh, well, some leech from Viper at least. Mark of Illusion? I don't have it either. This, this is all I have in components, right? I don't have a single part of my stash, so... This is all I have. What kind of build is this? Wait, what does it look like? It is a... spin to win character. A fire, spin to win. Sentinel is the idea. I mean, for now it's... Whatever damage triumph you're doing. Like mostly physical, I guess. But it will be primarily fire later. Actually, not like that much later. Once we can like dual wield and we have like the um, rift, rift scorch slicer or something like that, um, we will basically be playing um, fire damage only. Kraken Revenant Torch. Uh, it's gonna be dual wield, I think. So probably no Kraken. Like the item I want to use is the Rift Scorch Slicer, which is one-handed. So you can't really play Kraken. But if you would like to play Tunit instead, then sure you can play Kraken Devotion. <laughs> Yo, Undo will come. Need to this build, need to this game. By the way, what was your video about on YouTube that you just posted today about uh, something with Medley? I just like, it was I guess a... Is like the dot damage from the two Orestia rings or whatever ring you were testing there stacking or not? Or what was your, what were you testing? I just like watched it on my phone, I couldn't like actually understand what you were actually doing. But like rather I saw it and I recommended it on my phone for some reason. <clears throat> Oh, so they're stacking. Two eyes are stacking, even though they shouldn't. Or not. Like the dot now just stacking. Oh, what is the issue? Two seed of blaze are also stacking? Wait, what? Oh, you mean the bleed damage? I mean... That's fine, I guess, though. Wait, what? Yeah, actually, why am I surprised? Oh, 
Oh, Madly was saying how they weren't snacking. So Madly was wrong. Why what? Madly can be wrong? Question mark, question mark, question mark. And the game is wrong, Madly is always right. True. Madly is always right. He can't be wrong, dude. What are you talking about? Also, if you are still for some reason like struggling to like keep up energy, you could also like put points to spirit. Like unironically, right? Spirit also scales fire damage, so it wouldn't be like that bad to do that. Uh, I would kind of not advise you to, but I mean you can do it, right? You can do it, sure. Your energy levels are fine, thanks. Okay. 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 How did I only like still find one slip necklace? Are you kidding me? What the hell? Oh, you're right. I mean, you don't necessarily have to choose a certain faction, right? But you kind of want to go with a solar eye, right? Like, you can't farm the chaos boss as well, right? And the first, like, post Vanguard quest, like the Rift, right? The Chaos Rift. He has, a, I think, a very high chance to drop uh, Rift Scourge to right? Just level up? Yeah, just level up, dude. Like, why would you not level up? Getting stunned left and right and right and left, what is this? I mean, isn't that what I said? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you have to chew with Solal, because otherwise you can't farm the boss. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if that's what I said, actually, but that's, that's what I implied, at least, as well. But you can also, like, just farm other Rift Scourge... Like... What are they called? T-Rexes? Dinosaurs? Even if you're not side with Solar, but if you're side with Solar, then yes, it's a little bit easier. True, 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 very really true. Can you buy it? You can also buy it in Tomb of the Heretic, but I mean, you don't really want to go. I mean, you can go there, I guess, but it's kind of kind of long. Rift claws, yeah, rift claws. Wait, they they also like spawn somewhere else, right? Not only in that rift, right? I'm pretty sure they also like exist somewhere else. Rift Claw Slicer? Well, it has the conversion, right? Or what am I missing? Uh, not Rift Scourge, Rift Claw. Rift Claw. Rift Claw Slicer. Not Rift Scourge Slicer. My bad. Hey, we found an actual item. Alright, let's use the actual item. Just in time for this end boss here as well, Warden Krieg, right? That's a decent weapon. I mean, the damage is all over the, all over the place, but I mean, we don't really care about that right now. Ah, it's this early into the game, we just need like any damage. Doesn't really matter what kind of damage it is. I mean, if it's fire, we're like happier, of course, but if it's not, then it's also fine. My true power? Give me a sec, guys. What the fuck?
Why are you calling me right now, man? Just Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rift Claw is certainly like a lot of harder to get than Sand Claw, definitely. Like 100%. Okay, let's go back to John Bourbon, right? Basically, defeated Act 1 right now. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Sell all the scrap. That's fine. What build am I gonna go for? This is gonna be a. Fire are reckoning something. So, you must so this guy right Mornay or rather also like um, opening up the like repairing the bridge rather is gonna like enable act two. But if we wanna go to act um, seven, right? Like the Forgotten Gods act. So, how are you gonna get there? Well, you're gonna get there via this guy, right? The emissary. Ah, I cannot. Right. Let's go here. <laughs> uh, there's also like a small. Secret item up here, I guess, that you can get. I mean, you're not gonna need it for this build. It's really, uh, like, basically useless for this build, but oh well. Right. Wow, a legendary bad chest. I mean, it's not a bad chest, it's a, it's a shield, actually. Or like a mace, pretending to be a shield, I guess. Totally a shield, though. Totally a shield. So, you have you the th go. Let me, I think, use these pants, right? They seem decent. The emissary war. A sword, just some random, whatever you find, sword right now. It's a gut, I think I got the wrench eviscerator right now. Whatever you find, right? Like, whatever one, like, two under you find for now. Because you need to. Well, get to respect it, right? That was crossing. So we need to, like, do some Act 2 quests as well, actually, to, to be able to do a wield. And we also need to be level 25 to do a wield, so. Yeah. Um, and as we just mentioned, we wanna. We wanna sign with Solile, because Solile will. Make it easier for us to get those like rifts, uh, not rift scourge, but rift claw stars as well. I shouldn't like uh, so, the call them the long the name all the time. The rift claw slicers. Um, also, there are faction vendors over here, and these faction vendors always will sell you like a movement ability, uh, like a movement rune that you can put on your. Oops, I can like buy some of them. You can put these on your metal, right? And then you will have like another movement ability. So I don't know. You can like, yeah. Virus might and rush. Double Trap. zoomer, right? Zoom, zoom even more. What happened to fix your build? Uh, we can do it once we're done with this episode here, like at the end of the stream, basically. We can look at builds then. I could also like go to the smith and like craft some components, right? Like, I could do that right now. What am I doing? You can either do do it at the one in Devil's Crossing, they just rescue like one, or you can also go to Forgotten Gods, right? Like, do the Conclave. There is also a smith down there. Um, that also works. And these have, for example, like... You can look at components here, right? They have, like, a couple of, like, things they can craft right away. 
And then you can also find blueprints which will make them be able to craft even more items. Um, so what you want right now is probably movement speed, so something like ward stones in metal and amulet. You want a antivenom salve in your belt at least. And then... What else do we want even? Like a scaled hide maybe? Oh, we don't have enough bristly furs, okay. I mean, you want like scaled hides, like two of them, and shoulders and pants as well. Just to like pump up your arm absorption, because arm absorption is a weird thing in Grim Dawn. But basically, by default, your armor only has 70% effectiveness, and you need to like get more items that have, or like components rather, that have armor absorption increase on them to like make your arm more efficient. It is really a kind of redundant system, I feel like, but it is there, and uh, it being there, we have to like play around it and uh, use well, items that give us like arm absorption. Alright, we got more movement speed now, that's pretty cool. We can also, I believe, put points to... Well, just put points to imp now, right? Get the imp prop, maybe? I kinda wanna get more movement speed as well, though. Hmm. Am I talking to my past self? Maybe. I mean, learn from my mistakes, right? That's basically like what these videos are for. Uh, okay, so what we want is... What do we want next, actually? I mean, you want... You want Presence of Virtue, right? Like, maxed out with the energy region. You want... Solar is Witchfire maxed out for attack speed. You wanna, well, spin to win, right? I guess it's kinda like all you need for now, right? I guess we max out this and then we actually get Solar's Witchfire next for the attack speed. Morganath? Right, Morganath single player? Your blue Pokemon. So can I farm with damage reduction? I mean, just kill him, I don't know. I mean, it's worth it if you want his items. Yeah, if you don't want his items, then it's not worth it. I guess. Alright, I mean, energy regen should be like good enough now, right? We have the Viper, we have Presence of Virtue, like a soft cap. It should be fine, like totally fine now. Alright, we're gonna find the Eye of the Core down in the Temple of Azure. And I mean, we're also gonna go down here because of the Devotion Shrine that we can get in here. Fuck auto mode. Indeed. How good is this? Hmm, it's kind of bad. 
Don't really need that item, do I? Mm, this might be a vague armor increase though, right? This helmet. So, when it comes to gear, right? What do, how do you wanna pick up gear? Like, what do you wanna prioritize and so on? Well, for your weapon, damage. Like, always damage. For your other gear slots, in Grim Dawn, I would say, especially in Hardcore, it's pretty much always resistance cells. Over... Like, resistances, greater armor, greater damage. But also, like, better than everything else, it's, like, still plus skills, like, plus skill points or skill modifiers. Like, those are, like, really, really, really strong as well. So, and, like, percent damage, I mean, if you have percent damage on top, sure, it's cool, though, but, like, you don't need it as badly because you're gonna, like, get percent damage from your devotions and, like, your skills anyway, right? Don't think kids should be on Twitch chat. And yet here you are. Uh, Chat's being toxic again, what the heck? Are we speaking to our reckoning? Yeah, at level I think 15 or 16. I think 15 actually. Alright, another shrine. See shrine, click on shrine, don't get arcane by arcane mobs. And you will learn what that means soon enough. Right? Alright. This can be actually kind of sketchy, right? What's my code in Lightning Rods? Yeah, that's fine, right? It is fine. But it would be kind of annoying when... Uh, like he... Stuns you and you're not spinning anymore, right? Also, doesn't the belt have leech? Why am I like, not leeching at all? What the hell? This is still because of the low weapon damage, I guess. I mean, 6% leech is... ...being reduced by, uh, like, multiplied by 0 0.28, I guess. Will I use Judgment? Probably at some point, yeah. Why did he not cast his devastation then? Maybe he doesn't do it at like level 19, I don't know. What bit am I going for? It doesn't say fire our reckoning build. Like a fire sentinel our reckoning. Right, we're Oathkeeper. 12 points, presence of virtue, 1 virus mind for mobility, 16 in our reckoning. And we're gonna get attack speed on Solaz which fire next. Basically, what we're doing, right? Also, my weapon kind of sucks right now. And it will hopefully improve. We have a gut wrench eviscerator, two handed bleed weapon, which is, I mean. not ideal right now. Certainly not ideal, right? Do it with our reckoning? That is the plan, yes. I do need to be level 25 though. I do need to um, be friendly with Devil's Crossing and then craft the like Blade Sworn Talisman. And also need to like get two Rift, Rift Claw Slicers. There we go, that's Rift Scorch. And then we're good, right? I feel like these watchers would drop like their fire hammer. Would be very nice as well. Also, time warped. Yeah, does a little like hurts a ton because he's like a big slow aura, which is very annoying right now. But he has decent loot apparently, so that's probably worth it. I 
it is Searing Reaping Halberd. Well, Reaping Halberd is a vitality based Halberd, right? However, Searing is a fire damage apex. So it uh, still deals less damage. Pog? Okay. <laughs> Unlucky, I guess. Main hand and offhand damage. Well, if you have a sword in your second hand, then yes. Like it scales of dual wielding as well, man. Like if you're using two swords, then of course like it's gonna hit with two swords, right? But if you have a book in your hand, then you're not gonna hit enemies with a book. Right? And also the shield actually also doesn't hit, right? It's only like a second weapon in your offhand that would work for it. Why nobody takes bone talisman? I mean, I'm not at the Bone Talisman yet, am I? But yeah. The thing is, Bone Talisman is cool and all, right? It's like a relic that you can get in Act 2 that can improve your... Uh, you don't want to use this when it converts elemental to vitality, but we do not want to do that, do we? This could be interesting though, right? Just for... Whatever it gives me, right? Huh. Also, Starlord of the Wolf. That's better than Vigorous of Prowess, right? Could bet at least. Sure. And I do need to, well, use another Relic level 25 anyway, so like the amount of time, or like the time frame in which the Bone Talisman would be useful for me is gonna be very, like, Narrow, like very small time frame, right? use these boots but I don't have movement speed right do I wanna lose movement speed I mean I guess it would be fine I mean it's really not fine though how do I not have a mark of the traveler yet right mark my boy mark where is it Also, if we get a Sand Claw Slicer from this, I think it's gonna be Pog as fuck as well, right? Because Sand Claw Slicers are broken, kind of. At least right now, they might get nerfed, though. Like, probably a bit. Nope, we didn't get it anyway. Never mind. No Sand Claw Slicer for me. I honestly think both items are broken, like both Sand Claw Slicer as well as Callista's Shield. Not, I'm not talking about the Blade Art part on Sand Claw Slicer, I'm talking about the Oath Keeper part uh, from Sand Claw Slicer. <laughs> they are turbo broken. I hope create over nerf it into the ground. I don't. I don't hope they over nerf it into the ground, but they are pretty fucking broken, are they not?
Hey, we got Ectoplasm, right? You could technically like put Ectoplasm on your ring now to get like more energy regen. Like these spirits here will drop Ectoplasms, for example. Where is up there this? Actually, we have even more, right? One here, one here, sure. Cactoplasm, right? Alright, let's go back and sell real quick. Don't mind things being broken. Actually, like, create to themselves mind, right? So they, like, themselves change stuff as well. Um. And, yeah, when you wanna, like, have a decent environment for, like, a competitive league as well, then it kinda also matters. Like, for sure. I don't know if they mind. I mean, they pretend to mind at least. But maybe they're like doing the wrong decisions sometimes. <laughs> when Maul could have removed? I mean, Maul is fine there, I think. Alright, we've got Solar's Witchfire. Uh, which, yeah, Witchfire. Which is like another pass, just like Prince of Virtue. Just put it in your second bar and toggle it on. And it's gonna give you like flat Kel's damage, attack speed. Um, um, yeah, I mean, we're mostly using it for attack speed. We're gonna max it out because it's like this early into the tree runs very nice to get to at this point in the game, I think. Very, very, very nice. And having some flat chaos damage is gonna be actually really helpful as well at this point of the game because at this stage, well, like in general, like enemies don't really have that much chaos resistance. And, well, we don't wanna scale chaos damage in the end, but rather fire damage. But it's still like damage, right? And some of the chaos, I mean, some of the fire devotions, at least the resistance reduction one, also overlaps with chaos anyway, so it's like totally fine to play right now. I mean, for endgame, ideally, you would like to convert it, and even if you cannot convert it, it will still be useful for the attack speed. Um, but for now, it's actually gonna be like helpful for like multiple reasons, right? Hey, Yo, Stan, welcome on. Maul is like Wendigo, has to come. Even if you reapply it, it's like it doesn't stack with itself, right? It only refreshes. It's like. Like it has this AoE, right? But this AoE only applies a debuff, and the debuff kind of like ticks like Curse of Reality. So, like, whenever it like procs again, it's only gonna like reapply that. It's like as if you were like spamming Curse of Reality. Like, that doesn't really do much. Like, think of like spamming Word of Pain, actually. It's like literally like Word of Pain, right? Like, if, as if you were like spamming Word of Pain. Like, sure, you can like refresh it a little bit sooner, but it doesn't really like stack with itself. Like, it, it, it having like no cooldown gives you like. Minimal more down compared to it, like not having a cooldown. I mean, to compare to it having a cooldown, rather. Yeah, yeah, the flat damage on bear. This flat damage here, it's ticking damage. It's like word of pain. This is like word of pain. The more like the damage on more is like word of pain. It works the same way as word of pain. So yeah, it's ticking and. Uh, it can only be refreshed.
Hey, you got a Slip Bane. That's another decent two hander, actually. And it's acid oriented, though, it's like you don't really want to play that, but. Does it into the game? I mean, I guess we take what we get from it. Yeah, sure. It's definitely more damage than what we have right now. Um, if you have a component on your weapon, right? Like I have my Searing Ember right now. You can hold on, for example, control to like compare the DPS with or without the uh, like component on it, right? And then you will see that this is indeed actually more damage. Also, at least if you like put the same component on it. Also, um, let's go to the smith real quick again. And let's see if we can craft Enchanted Flint. I think Enchanted Flint should be a baseline craft, like you can craft it right away once you save the smith, right? I don't know why I didn't pick it actually on this weapon as well. And you craft it, right? You put it on your weapon like this. And it's another aura, right? Burning weapons. So you just click on this and it's going to be active all the time. And what it does is it does give you like additional right, fire damage on the component itself and on the aura. And it's like basically 100% more like uh, fire damage. It's pretty good. Pretty good, right? Yeah, they couldn't they couldn't add armor reduction debuff to anything that wasn't ticking, so they had to like make it a ticking skill. Like mechanically it doesn't work to have armor reduction on whatever it was before. Like it just mechanically doesn't work. I mean it might have Maybe they wrote it there, but if, if they had it, like, written there, it wouldn't have done anything, because it mechanically doesn't work. Alright, there's this boss here, Terrigan, right? Uh, try to not get hit by too many of his, like, cold projectiles here. They can be a little scary, depending on your cold resistance, right? Yeah, yeah, it heals you every second for a 5 second duration, just like Wendigo does. That's how it still works. Alright, why the fuck did they spawn on the other side? Hello? What is this totem doing? A massacre, well that's a weapon. That is a weapon indeed, isn't it? Huh. Wait, how is Massacre less damage? Oh, because it doesn't have attack speed? Even though it's like fire base? Actually, no, it's physical base, but it has like some, like some flat damage, fire damage on top, I guess. And it looks like a fire weapon, but it's more like just physical, I guess. Never mind then. A good explorer's helmet. Hmm. I guess I should use it right. On the other hand, this thing gives me like vitality damage to this ability. Which is pretty good as well. At this sec uh, at this point at least. When he go has inner cooldown. Component. Yes. It's still less damage even without the component. Because of uh, Slough Bane's attack speed. And also, Slough Bane has like a higher. Actually, no, it doesn't have higher base damage. Does more have percent weapon damage? Now, if you put more on guard, it's not gonna heal you. Because it's no weapon damage. 
I think it's fine as you have it right now, like Bayer and our reckoning and Guardians on the south is better, it's gonna be fine. Alright, I still didn't get a single sand claw slicer. I mean there, I guess there's one. Hmm. Yeah, if you get two of these. I mean these aren't the rift claw slicers, but they're still pretty good with the physical damage and the attack speed. I wonder if like using one sand claw and one rift claw is better than using two rift claws. Because of the attack speed mod and the flat physical on sand claw. I'm actually wondering. Because like sand claw is so busted right now. I mean, putting Assassin's Mark on our Reckoning is great on Crucible. Because you wanted to like apply to everything ASAP. Outside of the Crucible, it's a little bit worse. But inside the Crucible, you always kind of like want your main ability, like whatever you're spamming, to be put on your um, like main resistance reduction ability. Because uh, well, you want to have it like affect enemies ASAP. But I mean, it always doesn't like it. Always like doesn't always work perfectly. Like, and in, in your case, you have to like. I'm pretty sure like stick with our reckoning on Maul and like have Assassin's Mark on Guardians because otherwise you you can't proc Maul really unless you want to like proc Maul with fire like the fire trait of Virus Might I guess. I think Crucible players actually do that, but I wouldn't. Wait, don't you have like all around devotion that you can put on guardians? If you're playing physical hour reckoning, like all around is fine in guardians. I don't. Okay. Death stalker maybe, yeah. Uh, Deathstalker doesn't help though, does it? Like, Deathstalker would be the same. Like, it wouldn't heal him. Like, if you're looking for some skill to put bear on, right? Like, Deathstalker would just be the same as, guard like, as Guardians, just worse. Stonehide of Haste. I mean, these are of haste, so they have movement speed, right? That's pretty nice. Um, also, I didn't talk about components yet, right? Like, how am I not talking about components? So, what you can do in this game, right? I mean, you can... No, I actually did, like, talk about components, right? What am I saying? I did talk about components. But I still have no Mark of the Traveler, right? And uh, I think you can actually buy it from these vendors. But well, I guess I'm just unlucky. It's more like, how did I not... How did I not have a Mark of the Traveler yet? That's the question. That's the actual question. Once you find consecrated wrappings, put it on your gloves, right? And why? Because they have attack speed, right? These are great for attack speed, also give you Chaos Rusts and Flat Chaos. Pretty decent. Let's try the scaled height crafting again. We don't have a breast of fur, okay. I guess we can just use uh, ancient armor plating here and mutated scales here. And what do we put here? I don't know, Polish Emerald for now, I guess. Because of what, like, mutated scales there. It really doesn't matter that much. Obsidian armor that I sold? No, it wasn't. I thought it was the acid one. I think obsidian armor is higher level, is it not? Now, this is guard, guard, guardsman's plate. 
this is an acid chest. Yeah, Obsidian 1 is, I think, level 40 or something like that. Like, way higher than this. Okay, you checked the patch logs, and yep, more was the broken September 2020, Winter King's Maul Charm was screwed by a later patch. Okay. Slip Bane Greater Massacre. It's just the skill having, like the thing having attack speed. I can I can go back maybe real quick. Maybe the vendor didn't like reset yet. Let's see. And it's gone. It's all gone. I mean, I, I, I double checked like three times, I think, already. Like with and without component. Um, Massacre actually has no percent fire damage on it, first of all. Second of all, Massacre is just like Slithbane, a base physical item. Actually, Slithbane is acid damage, never mind. Um, and third of all. Yeah, I mean, Massacre doesn't have an attack speed, right? whereas this one has. And for now, I guess my fire scaling is not really like kicking in yet, right? We're not really like at that point yet. So the damage type doesn't matter too much yet, right? It will at some point very soon, but not quite yet. Also, we can now put the um, Aether Fire on our Reckoning and we should create like green fire whenever we uh, attack anything with our Reckoning. <clears throat> right, this green fire down here is the Aether Fire Devotion proc, which is a very decent chance to proc off our Reckoning mostly. Which is gonna help, especially against bosses when it comes to clear speed. Because it can also like stack, right? It can like the damage of it can stack. It's pretty nice. No, where are you running? Come back here. What the fuck, Scorpion? Hello? Oh my god. Alright, so we're stacking the fire damage, right? Just like spin around him, I feel like that way you can like make sure he's still standing in one place while you can um, like dodge some abilities. Pretty nice. Yo, Ground Zero, welcome in, welcome in. I mean, patch 1.1.8 literally changed more to what we just said, though, right? Didn't it? Like, AoE debuff that causes physical damage with attack damage converted to health and armor reduction. That is literally like the mechanical change to the skill as well. I was broken 1.1.8. In what way? Like, that's the same as it is, is now, right? Is it not? I mean, do we want to go in this place? I mean, I guess we can. Sure, why not? Wait, did I, did I fuck up the mechanic? Wait, when did they fix it there? Yeah, for Chaos Hour Reckoning you need the Scythe, right? The Wrath of Tenebris. If you don't have the Scythe, you don't play it. Um, you can't play it. However, you can transition from Fire to Chaos rather smoothly, right? Like, you can play Fire all the way to Endgame, and then, like, play, like, continue to farm as Fire. Like, you can like, farm, for example, um, Totems and so on. And then once you get the, like, Scythe, right, you can uh, switch over to Chaos. Because Fire and Chaos do share some devotions, you don't have to like reassign all of your devotion points, or like some of them. I mean, you will have to like reset with a skill, uh, like with a potion, 
probably, but at least your levels, right? Like your levels that you have in these like active nodes from the devotions, they will be saved. And but if you have leveled Eldritch, I mean Solaris Witchfire, because you've played Fire before, you will still have those like that same level for Chaos as well. So the transitioning phase is not going to be like quite as brutal as for like other damage traps. I mean, fire is also really good in game. I feel like fire and chaos are like equally good-ish. I think I don't know. It's more about like what gear you find, I guess, or like what you personally just like more visually. I think fire you play dual building, and chaos you play two hundred as well. Alright, I'm just like doing some side zones here and there. I really don't need to do these side zones, to be honest. Like, this is kind of a waste of time ish. But. You wanna dodge these rocks falling from the sky? They always hurt. More scrap, pog. Yeah, true. I mean. Out of all the like I reckoning classes that you can make in this game, I feel like Sentinel is the most flexible, right? When it comes to damage charms, because you can play physical but warborn still. Sure, it might not be quite as good as maybe like a warlord, but it's still very very good. Uh, you can play fire, right? That's what we're gonna do here because I think it's like the easiest to to gear for. Um, you can play chaos with the scythe. You can play. Um, acid, if you find Dune Fiend set, right? You could even play Vitality. Vitality also works on Sentinel. Maybe not quite as well as... Hey, what's the best Vitality class for our, our Reckoning? Is it Oppressor? Might be Oppressor, right? Like Necromancer, instead of Oc Oc Ocotost. I'll update the build command in a second here once we have the uh, Rift Scorch Slicer, I guess. Uh, Rift Scorch Slicer, as I keep saying. Rift Claw Slicer. Uh, don't sell the Sand Claw Slicer. It might be actually useful, right? Because so we've got Zealot's Gloves, which should be good here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's go back real quick to actually Lotus Crossing because I need my component for my gloves back. And then we go and talk and yeah, yeah, we need to like hand in these quests, like the main quests for Act 7, because the third main quest, the first one after Vanguard, is gonna open up a rift, like a Chaos Rift. To a place where we can farm Rift Scourge. Not Rift Scourge. Rift Claws, right? Rift Claws and like a Rift Claw boss as well. There's some more side quests here we can do. Right? Like, for example, kill these guys. For, well, because Blood for the Blood God, right? Blood for Solile. And then 
it's also always kind of like funny to kill this guy or like to sacrifice this guy right because he's talking so much trash that like he's being hated by all of his own members as well like, like even this, this guy like wants to kill him right oh yeah uh, when it comes to your stash right in general you want to put everything in stash uh, like all components usually because they can be pulled from like if you go to a shrine and the shrine like requires you to put like whatever item in there it's like automatically also gonna pull from the stash right and also you don't want to ever sell the salt bag because you will need it for a certain secret quest later all right served three yeah plasma welcome Best our reckoning as you go somewhere? Maybe. Hello again. Hello again. Serve the three. Yeah, I mean physical physical can be stronger than fire, I think, as well. Uh, but physical needs uh, more gear to work properly, I think. Or I would say. And also physical, I think like for physical there are like right more guys out there than for fire maybe, I don't know. Anyway, we have gotten the quest. Yes, yes, I hear you. I hear you. Do we need to open up the gate right i like the rift right we need to get to the heart of onarix onarix the razor hide is the boss that we need to kill because he has a very very good chance to well, give us a rift scourge no rift claw slicer fuck me weapon is broken no oh, bare enough is fine it used to be broken but it's like i mean it's still strong of course but it's like not broken anymore i think it, it does what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, you basically need Warborn, like full Warborn set and bear enough blueprint for the sword. Like mythical bear enough, I guess, ideally. Uh, yeah, which is uh, certainly harder to get than whatever fire needs, because fire basically like, needs nothing. Get going. Where's my leech? Corrosive of wildfire. Okay, I mean, it's actually decent though. Because corrosive might have physical to acid conversion right on it. But it doesn't matter because we have 100% physical to fire conversion on our reckoning anyway. And this takes place before the physical to acid conversion that is global on the weapon. Yeah, so... Yep. Plus 3k DPS, yeah, it's almost like doubling my damage, right? It's like, plus 40% more damage, basically. <laughs> if I one-handed, right? That's not even counting dual wielding. And yeah, that's the reason why I want to go for this weapon. Alright, uh, we are level 25, I should not... Yeah, let's just go to Act 2 now. Like, we're done here. We're gonna stop here with Forgotten Gods, we don't do the entire act. And why? Because we have the weapon. And why else? 
Uh, well, because we need to get the Blades for Talisman still. But I've got a Flames Virtue, what the fuck? I mean, we're gonna use these two, I think. Flames Virtue is not too bad either, though. Alright, so I need reputation with Devil's Crossing because I need to buy the Blade Sworn Talisman Relic Blueprint. And I need this to do a wield, otherwise I cannot do a wield. So let's go. Into Act 2. And why Act 2? Well, because Act 2 uh, has Outlaws and Cronley's gang, like killing Cronley gang members and doing the quests for Devil's Crossing, will give me reputation for Devil's Crossing. So let's do that. Also, there are some like actual fire damage items we can get here, like incendiary cask, uh, incendiary shoulder pads, right? Like these are pretty good, right? Actually, is this a DPS loss because of the freaking like wit damage to survive the witchfire? Fuck, dude! Wow. Rift Claw Slicer even converts vitality to fire, right? Oh my god, it's so broken. That's gonna be pretty broken. But this is good, right? Yeah, better than that trash for sure. Alright. Let's rescue these guys. I need level 26, right? 26 for this, level 20 for this, okay. The sand claw slicer might not be used for like too much longer. Let's go down here into the um, cave because there's a shrine in there. minute spin? Yeah, for now, but uh, we're gonna switch to dual wield like in a second. Unlike last epoch, you don't take extra damage when you're dual wielding in this game, so dual wielding is pretty good in this game. Or like not quite as bad, rather. start posting a proper build for this, like a proper link for this once we like hit level 26 and we're friendly with those crossing. Because that's basically like the level where the build actually was gonna start right level 26. Oops, we scammed him. My bad. My bad. Actually, are these like brimstone shoulder guards? They are, right? Hmm. I mean, honestly, whatever. They're like okay. I mean, they're also decent, I guess. I could have used them. Thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven more rotation needed. 
Uh, it's not gonna take too long, I hope. Let's see. You get one for like a trash mob, two for a not quite as trashy mob, and then I think like 100 or something for higher enemies. Not quite sure. So we got Balthazar's Crust. That is a metal, which has also fire damage. So not that bad. I guess we're gonna hit level 26 a little bit before getting to... What is this? Respected. Right. I guess, I guess. Sure, what you have to do. I mean, maybe even like kill Kron there already. Like the boss map. I mean, it's technically not the Act 2 boss, but like one of the bosses on Act 2 for sure. There does just 3k more damage, even with a one-hander. Right. <laughs> From 5k to, to 8.6k. <laughs> Alright. Does it actually change visually? Oh yeah, it's more like... White, like a little bit duller. Like this. And now it's, I think, a little bit brighter, like a little more orange, right? Alright, cool. Explorer's tunic. Hmm. Okay. So we max out the witch fire. Um, do we get like rebuke maxed out next? Probably right. Like for the flat physical, which also gets converted to fire. We could also just like try to go for divine mandate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like lore wise, I mean lore wise, it's like act two is Cronley, right? And then after Cronley, you're kind of like into an act 2.5 with the Undercity bosses being like like something like Kyrian or Alchemist being like the main bosses of like act 2.5 and then Valdrak just is there, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little weird indeed. I would agree. Okay, now I don't quite know if I want to use Flames Virtue or the sand claw slicer, but probably actually a sand claw slicer as my second weapon, which I can't use yet because I don't have the relic. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be, be um, the sand claw slicer. Like the flames virtue shows me like less DPS loss here compared to sand claw slicer. However, um, that does not factor in the flat physical and attack speed to presence of virtue yet. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be way better than this. Alright, what do we aim for next? We want to get to Solana's Witchblade, and maybe at some point, and also we want to get to, what is it called? Rowan's Crown, right? So we basically... Oh, 
also you want ghoul red for more leech so this would be greens so I think we actually go for Quill because Quill ticks both the 6 green for Witchblade as well as the 6 green for Rowan's Crown as well as the well, 4 purple because we're gonna like get the Quill and the note here and then we have like 4 purple as well. Okay. Wild Rock hashtag not my act 2 boss. <laughs> not your boss. Alright. I mean, lore-wise, even without the like ultimate merit and so on, like if you play SSF. Yeah, I mean, there's no quest attached to him, right? The only quest is like to get through Smuggers Pass, and he's just like there blocking the pass, I guess. So you have to just like kill him indirectly, but there's no actual like reason to kill him, like quest-wise at least. What do we have here? Uh, no attack speed. Okay. See you around. Oh, let's go back to the last crossing actually real quick. Maybe I can actually already craft something. I don't know how much like reputation these quests will give me here. Let's see. Well, you work Darius Cronley. Last 250? That's like nothing. Bet. What the hell? Are you kidding me? What? Wow. This guy doesn't give any reputation either. Okay, Skinner's Family Seal though gives you flat physical damage, which gets converted to fire, right? But you also lose the attack speed. Never mind, it's actually worse then. Hmm. It will be also Pierce and Elemental Rust there. I guess we can still use it. Like, resistances are pretty important after all as well. Yo, Marcus, welcome. Lore or Mega Lore? Keep your weapon. I mean, Keep your weapon. the lore in this game is good in my opinion. But if you don't like it, you don't have to look at it. Like, you, have to, you don't have to read it really. Apart from maybe like, one or two secret quests for which you actually do have to read. I guess I should have picked another ectoplasm, maybe. Now, there are some pit bosses in the pit in Four Hills, right? I mean, might as well kill myself here. Oh my god, I've killed myself, what the fuck? Wrecked by Protoss, got wrecked by wrecked by Protoss, right? This is a tank speed there. That is pretty good. And the metal is decent as well, honestly. Like, I might just use it for now. Yeah, let's just use it actually. It's fine. It has very nice CC resistances. Keep in mind that you have to reapply your like movement augment on it, right? There we go. Can't move an item from a tier stash. Uh, 
What does it tell you when you try to? Like usually the item assistant should like show up some error messages at the bottom. Epic amulet, plus one all skills to Oculatist. I mean, that's like only one skill point, is it? Not. Yeah. Kinda not necessary right now. Are you trying B Rising? Is it like Valheim meets an ARPG or? How does it feel like? It looked pretty interesting, I guess, but then I watched like Co Carnage just harvest trees for 10 minutes and I was like, is this a new world? <laughs> but I guess I might have like watched the, like, the wrong 10 seconds there. I mean, the no, wrong 10, 10 minutes rather. There's another shrine down here, let's get it. It's slow going, I guess. Mm. I mean, like most survival games, right? Most survival games are rather slow going. Never played Valheim? Oh, okay. I, mean, I think Valheim's pretty good as well. But I think people say that V Rising might be even better, honestly. Uh, okay, let's put points here. Well, I meets an RPG, as how your friend described it to you as well. I mean, it kind of looks like that, I guess. The aesthetic seemed a little... Yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of it either, when I saw it the first time. But I mean, aesthetics are... I mean, they can be important, yes, but they're not like everything, I feel like. I also didn't like Valheim's aesthetics the first time I saw it. It felt kind of like, what the fuck is this Minecraft game, when I first like saw Valheim. Because they're kind of like low poly. Uh, it's kind of like the low poly style for some reason. Just ah, built your first castle. Speak at last. Then you got wrecked by a stone water. Yo, Roman Vexillum. Welcome, thanks for the follow. I mean, there's some aesthetics that you just can't get past. But I feel like V Rising is not that bad looking. Like, it might not be perfectly my style, but I would probably still play it if like, the game like play was actually good. I mean, Grim Dawn doesn't have like the best graphics either, right? Like, let's be real, it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty dated as well, graphic wise. I mean, I think it still like looks good and like everything is like beautifully crafted, like handcrafted, put together and so on. Like it's so good, like also like the What's it called? Like enemies exploding or like the ragdolling, like the physics of like items dropping and so on. Like it, it looks like for a game this age, it looks pretty good though. But it, I mean, it kind of also like looks like a game from like the early 2010 tens maybe, not like from 2010, 2011, something like that. It's actually from 2016. Um, but still, like for a game that looks like that. Yeah, that's pretty nice physics. So. Am I playing with mods right now? No, this is pure vanilla, no mods. I mean, I do have all the dealer seals, but, but no mods now. Not a single mod. If you are new to this game though, I do recommend you to... Well, it's not really a mod, it's just like a TXT file that like modifies the way like items look like in the game. The rainbow filter, it's called. Um, and, like just kind of like search for a rainbow filter on Google or like on the forums, right? And you're gonna find it. 
what it does is like it makes it a little bit easier for you to understand the quality of green items, right? Because in this game, green items can be many things. I mean, white, yellow, purple, and blue are pretty self-explanatory. Like blue and purple being like uniques, blues being more common, purples being like rare, right? Um, like calling epics and legendaries, right? But the rare items can be many things. Like for example, this one is a green item because it has well, it has a yellow prefix, it has a white base and a green suffix. And in the vanilla game, this is just green because the highest rarity will color the item. But in Grim Eternals, this would show as warped being yellow, solid warm up being white, and of cruelty being green. Um, and then you can like see, okay, this is like maybe not actually that rare of an item, like not that valuable of an item. Whereas, for example, I don't know, this one is for example, Starbird, yellow prefix, of the wolf, yellow suffix, and cauldron plating just being a rare base, like a rare implicit. So it is like yellow, green, yellow. Because of that, it's already like a basically way better item than this. Even though it's like the same color in vanilla. Um, so yeah, if you're a new player, I do recommend you to, if you want at least an easier understanding of the items in this game, to, well, check out the rainbow filter. Right. Pretty nice. Like. Why am I one-handed? Because I'm still lacking reputation. I would be crafting the duo with Relic ASAP if I could. And maybe I can now. I still can't. I need to be respected, right? I have the item already here. Waiting. Ready and waiting. But yeah, welcome in Salvor. How you doing, man? I can use a book or something? No. <laughs> I mean, I could if I had one. I didn't get one. I, I, I could, like, use some trash item from Act 1, I guess I sold, like, 10 years ago. I could have, yeah, but I didn't find any. I, I could also, like, use a shield, but I don't know, like, the, the, I don't have one. <laughs> I sold all of them. I'm sorry. I was using a 2 ender before. I was using, um, like, before level 26, which was, like, one level ago. Like, before I was able to equip this one, I was using a... Actually, Slith Bane, because like it has attack speed, it's like the best 200 I had so far. Don't really need Rainbow Filter once you learn the affixes. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I mean, it can be still nice to look at visually. I mean, some people like it visually, some people don't. I would say it, like, once you know the affixes, that's well, rather unnecessary now, clutter. Alright, we respect it. We can finally buy the blueprint. But if you're new to the game, it's like very, very good. Right. To help you understand again. Right. So this blueprint will make me able to craft a blade sworn talisman, which needs a resilient plating and a brain. A good thing we have a brain, right? And we can craft this. So now we have this, and now we can use sand claw slicer here as well. And our DPS drops from like jumps from 12 to like 15.5 and we can use a second burning weapons the stack and we're at 18k right so we have like another 6k more which compared to what we had with the two-hander two levels ago we had like what 5,000 now we have 18,000 right? so it's uh it's pretty decent what you could also do is you could farm for a second rift claw slice right you could like reset your session go to the same chaos rift again where we got the first one and like kill that boss again um, but honestly, I'm just too lazy to do that. Right, there's no need to do that right now for me. Uh, also, I still didn't get a mark of the Traveler. Are you kidding me? What the fuck, dude? What is this? Okay, dude. <laughs> maybe, maybe next stream then. Alright, let me finally put a proper... Properly set up level 27 um, ground tools now here. Right, just just imagine like having Mark the Traveler on the boots on top. And that's like a decent level 27 uh, ground tools here. I mean, yeah, even if you know the affixes, it still makes it like, easier to spot items because like... I mean, a brain can like spot colors. Or like colors help a brain like spot things easier, right?
Tarot. Also, I guess at some point you could even like remove the normal rares, but no, I mean not not now, not the normal. I feel like maybe later. Okay, we're basically just gonna like one shot everything if we touch right now. We could switch over to like veteran as well if we wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to, right? Okay. Rundana is so well balanced, bad chest. I mean, it's normal difficulty, right? Like, it's basically a tutorial level. You can play veteran to have, like, a little bit. Well, <laughs> more of a challenge. And also, yeah, monster frequency just kind of break the game if you, like, know which ones to go for and so on. Yeah, 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 MIs just break the game. It's not necessarily like the conversion on the MIs, right? It's just like the added flat damage that you get, for example, for Eye Reckoning. Like, it's absolutely insane. Like, no reason. You just get, like, shit ton of damage. You need an Abomination and Dying God for Chaos? Uh, sure, we can check it out at the end later. Fifty percent of builds cannot kill Celestials. I mean, depends which Celestial. Also, can like can can fifty percent of builds like kill? I mean, I guess in PoE it's like you can always outgear everything. But can you do it like on any build? Can you like kill the hardest boss in PoE on any build? I don't know. It's like a different. Part of the game, though, right? Like, if you're talking about early game, MI balance is like totally different from like end game. Um, like, you could make MIs like scale so that like they're less powerful early game and like still the same, have still like the same power in end game. Like, MIs are, I would say, very well balanced for like end game, um, but like for leveling, they are just pretty broken. It's like they kind of make the game decent, like, very easy early, actually. How you define build? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Grand Dawn. Like, you could also say that like every build that cannot kill Ravager is not a build, right? Because tons of builds can actually kill Ravager, and also like depends on. I, I think like almost all builds can actually kill Ravager. Like you either face tank or you kite them well. Like you kite them well. Like I don't know. I think like Ravager is ironic, like being. Like, almost doable on all builds, and all, like all decent, like all build archetypes rather. Not necessarily all good builds, but like all build archetypes. And if your build can't do it, then your build kind of sucks, I guess. Um, but there's also like a big difference between like doing a super boss comfortably and not so comfortably, right? And there's also like a difference between like individual sk like player skill level of course. <laughs> All old keeper builds can kill Ravager. I mean yeah. That is true. Because you don't even need a second mastery. Yeah, even like Panetti can kill Ravager, exactly. And like literally, literally all builds can kill Lokar, and Lokar is technically technically a Celestial as well. I mean, I know there's a very big power difference between like Lokar and say something like Mogdrogan or Mok uh, Ravager or Kalagadra, but I mean, if you say like fifty percent of builds cannot kill Celestials. As in all Celestials, including Kala, Gajra, and 
or like mostly just crates, honestly, then yeah, I mean, that's true, but it's like one boss out of, I don't know, like how many in the Would you, would you want like to trivialize the entire game just because you cannot kill one single boss? I don't know about that. That's probably like a, not the right balancing approach, I think. I feel like the game is too easy anyway right now. And, yeah, I mean, I think MI scaling is, is kind of maybe the, the reason for it as well. At least like some MIs, like adding flat damage like early, like, like this one is just insane. It is just insane. I feel like they balanced MIs around the fact that like people don't know where you get them. <laughs> <laughs> At least on normal difficulty. On higher difficulty, I think they balance the game around like people knowing where to get them. But like on normal difficulty, I always feel like they balance around the game around like people not knowing where to get them. Because once you get them, the game is just easy. As it is right now, kind of. I guess it's like PoE, right? Like Act One is the hardest, right? Even in Grand because after Act 1 you just have your items and then it's like, GG. I mean, it depends on the build, like when you actually get your item there, but... For almost all builds, like Act 1 is pretty hard. Kinda. Mm, you don't just change all flat values, you need to like do different skill modifiers, like for low and high, right? Like you need to like basically do like... You need to basically like double... Like you need to look at all skill modifiers. You need to like... Check out all that have flat damage values on them, and they need to like make a low level variant for all of them, right. or like two or three, depending on like how quickly you want it to scale, right? I mean, it's the same with movement speed. Uh, it's just like if you had more. Like, the game is just balanced around 135 movement speed, right? Like, if you had more, then the game would be easy. Like, even easier. I mean, Titan Quest also had a movement speed cap. It just was higher. It was like, I think, 165 or something like that. And I do think that Chrome Dawn would be... I mean, I'm... It makes sense to have 135 movement speed in vanilla Chrome Dawn, I think. But, like, with expansion of movement skills existing, I feel like you... Sh don't really need 135. That's, like... We'll be fine with like 145 as well. Um, but like it having no cap right now would mean that you need to like balance all other devotions and gear and skills and components like granting you movement speed around that fact as well. Otherwise you just get like 300% movement speed and yeah I mean then it's no fun anymore either right. Why Sentinel and not Shebreaker slash Paladin? Uh, Sentinel is more flexible, and Sentinel is actually also one of the best for fire for endgame. It's, it's lazier as well. Like, you don't have to, like, throw a cocktail, throw mines, like Shebreaker does have to. And you do have more attack speed than Paladin, because of Solaris which fire. And you just get, like, resistances for free. Um, on, like, Aspect of the Guardian. And Balance items, not hard cap it. I mean, effectively, that's like the same than the. Right? Like, if you. They could balance all items in the game so that with the maximum amount of, amount of like movement speed you get from items, you just get to 135%, right? I mean, that would be what you sell, but would that be more movement speed? No, it would be the same, right? You would have the same 135 movement speed max. But now, with the fact that not that many builds can reach that, right? Like, less builds can reach it. And is that like a better way to balance it? I don't know. I mean, total speed in classes just wouldn't exist, I think. Like, it would just be casting attack speed and no movement speed at all. For example, that's like how you would balance it. You would just remove it completely. Collect my third inventory back. Where do you get it from? Oh, was that uh, the rovers? I guess it was the rovers, right? Yeah, I forgot about that.
I mean, you need to, you need to either way, I think, like, I mean, balance the ga game around something. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, you could just do it like PoE and have people get like absolutely insane movement speed. I don't know. I don't think that's like fun to play, but I know people just would probably disagree with me. Movement speed comes at a cost in Path of Exile, not like in Chrome Dawn. I mean, putting a Market or Traveler, for example, makes you have less resistances, or like a one less slot open for resistances, I guess, for example. But for example, on Devotions or like in the skill tree, you get like movement speed on many skills, like for free on top. And all of those would have to be removed. And even the like trade off. For movement speed on a component slot is like not that big of a deal, I guess. Yeah, like just, like, yeah, yeah, some classes just reach 135% without like doing anything, right? They just have it. They just have it. Alright, I think Kyrion's Skullbreaker, right, if you get this item, it can be a decent alternative to, say, a superior Sandclaw of Alacrity. Um, I got Corrosive of Ruin, though, which really is kinda horrible, right, is it not? I'm pretty sure it shows, like, DPS here as bigger because it thinks that the attack speed from Presence of Virtue would carry over to Kyrians, which it doesn't. So let's do it like this and then compare again. Yeah. It's actually... Right. Is it still more damage? No, it's not right. Oh yeah, because now it doesn't take into account the attack speed, right? So yeah, 140. Uh, like 14k rather, and this is still like because of the attack speed, but it's like 16k. Yeah, of course. Sand close lines is just too broken. Didn't even one hit carry. <laughs> here. I don't know, at least with how the game is designed right now, there needs to be a cap, right? And redesigning the game around not having a cap would be a major rebalance. Like, absolutely major. I'm not saying it can't be done, I'm pretty sure it can be done. But, yeah, like, might as well instead develop Grimdon 2 and then not have a cap there and, like, balance Grimdon 2 around the fact that you don't have a cap, right? I mean, that's how big of a rebalance it would be. So, right now, the thing that you could do is just like increase the cap like slightly. But like removing the cap would be bad. Like horrible, I think. Like just bad for the game overall. Alright, two more pawns to sign. Let's put one here and then we get one here and then we have the which blade? Do we actually want to go for which blade first or for Elemental Storm? I guess Elite Storm is easier to get to, right? It's only three points. And then we're gonna get to which fire after that, right? So where are we going now? Broken House, right? Okay. <clears throat> Grimdon 2 coming out in 2050? Yeah. Pretty much. Wait, right, maybe not. Maybe earlier. Copium. I mean, does any building Grimdon rely on movement speed there? 
I mean, all do, but like equally, they also don't. I should get my inventory back, right? Like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I have quests here. Like, please hand them in. <laughs> Which quest is it? Is it this quest that gives you an inventory back? Yeah, let's just give him the talisman back. I don't need it, right? No, that's just iron bits. Blockade is destroyed. Inventory back. Okay, there we go. The blockade has been destroyed. Okay, what do we do now? We just go for... I mean, one point resilience, right? Sure, sure, sure. And then we push for Divine Bandit, I guess. We could also grab the Judgment skill to proc Devotions, I guess. Yo, Sarlok, look one, look one. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the builds that I can see benefiting from that would be something like well, ranged builds, right? Like gun builds, like Fire Strike, Cadence, and so on. And Penalty, right? And I think those builds would be fine with a buff, right? So as I said, like I'm not against like increasing the movement speed cap. I think it would be actually pretty nice. Oh yeah, we're gonna get the Guardians as well as a procker. Like, Guardians are a very very nice procker as well. Like super lazy, right? Super duper lazy. Dude, what is this damage? <laughs> Freaking Rift Claw Slicer is balanced. I mean, it is for endgame, but like for now, it's. What the fuck? What the fuck, tips? I mean, for ranged builds, right? For builds using a gun at least, it would be very easy to fix it, right? You just increase movement speed cap, and then you put movement speed on Hydra Devotion. That way, like, all gun users that use Hydra at least gain more um, movement speed. Which would, I guess, work for at least the attacker builds, right? Um, the castles would still suffer, I guess, but you could also maybe like put movement speed on a Plains Lantern. But a Plains Lantern is also going to be used by like uh, Queen Reduction casters, I guess. Which I'm not sure need a buff. I think CDR casters are like the best archetype in the game, actually. Like piano casters. Apart from maybe like pet bills and like some super tanks. Yo, Dex McTex, work on, work on. Totem. Uh, we're approaching Valdrak, right? The end boss of Act 2, I guess. Technically. He can slap, so like trying to dodge his overhead slams at least. Lawn Mower Simulator, yeah. We're really just mowing the lawn here. It's like doing, what is it, Blood Aqueduct and Pewee? Just like every map is Blood Aqueduct. Veteran mode time. Should we play Veteran from now on? To make it like at least not super boring to watch, I guess. I mean, I guess we can do that, right? Let's play some Veteran. 
at least. You can change between veteran and non-veteran like all the time, at any point. Good, you're back. So let's do that right now. Just like tick the box, right? <laughs> Yo. Neomort, thanks for gifting a gift that's uh, a gifter to Loop65. And welcome into the bloomers, Loop65. Very much appreciate the support. Alright, so Deadman's Gulch is basically where the so-called Act 3, if you want to like call it that, is gonna start. So, um... Let's do that quest, right? Also, let's hide all the like quests that are not from this act. How did I not find like three passages? What the fuck is this? I'm zooming too much here. Veteran plays veteran. <laughs> Love. Uh, I need a third lectern. Okay, there's one up there. Okay, there's one here. I mean, does it make a difference? <laughs> <laughs> they like literally die just as quick, dude. At least these mobs here. Let's check the other mobs. You lost the Magi ring to item assistant. Got it back after your message, so good luck, I guess. Oh. Well, congrats on getting it back, at least. Yeah, dude, what is this? Like, I just touched them and they die. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, is Ikrix over here? Huh? Ikrix is already here. Okay, I mean, bosses are gonna take like, I guess like two seconds longer now. Oh, they also deal some damage at least. Okay. Remember when I convinced Zantai to nerf like low level versions of Blitz items? Maybe I should like convince them to do the same for all other MIs as well at the same time. Like, hmm. There is no metal for Kale's damage which played for some reason. Uh, is there not? Oh yeah, I guess people just play Radak metal, right? On like Rosin. Like the green Radak metal. Oh, you didn't look at the mod selection at the top right? Oh, yeah, okay. That does explain stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Star of the Seed, true. Black Star of the Seed is really good as well. It's like attack speed, leech, chaos damage. Really nice. Really, really nice. Like generic metal as well. Yeah, it can. Serve as, as a sort of flat R, but I, I mean, usually you're also like playing Revenant anyway. But yeah, if you don't want to play Revenant for some reason, you can also play uh, Black Star just for the RR as well on top. It's pretty good. 
in multiple ways. True, true. Wait, where are we going? Where are we going? Let's go over here. Let's go to Homestead. And Kind of funny, this is like damage before a single point of resistance reduction, right? Like, we don't have a single point of resistance reduction right now. I should look at boots, though. I definitely should. Dominators of Haste. Uh, hmm. Survivalist of Readiness. That is movement speed, right, is it not? Yeah, it is as well. Sure. Sure, 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 sure. What do we have here? Death's whale mark. Death's whale mark. I didn't complete the Viper yet, no. I just wanted for the attacks, I mean the energy leech. For now. The Crony Ring is pretty good. Like, the rings Crony can drop are in general, like, really, really nice. Uh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, we need to talk to this guy over here, right? I finally have two rockets for Traveler. Oh, yeah, right. You are totally right. Finally. So how good work. So what's movement speed now? 131. Alright. 135 is cap, so we're like almost at cap already. But not quite. I mean on this class it's a little bit harder to get to cap because like neither of the classes give you movement speed, right? It's certainly easier on um, on other classes. I wasn't sure you I wish I'm going to Like on I don't know, purifier for example. I'll skip the you are joking. The Legion You're is You're joking, on... right? I mean not. But yeah, we're gonna eventually uh, finish the Viper Devotion as well, for sure. Definitely. Should I take the Guardians here already? Oh yeah, 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 I did, like, for sure. Okay, so Guardians of Empyrean, right, you can like summon two of them. You can like put them on your second bar as well, and they will like just follow you around forever, basically. Uh, the base skill doesn't really do that much. We're gonna use them here to proc a Devotion for us, so that we don't have to ourselves. Um, because if you... Well, you need like one skill per Devotion that you wanna proc, right? At least uh, for the ones that need like active devotions on them. And uh, well, if you're playing our reckoning, you don't want to interrupt yourself channeling our reckoning, right? You want to have, for example, minions like these guys that like proc devotions for you. Right? You can like bind, for example, Elemental Storm on the Guardians. So that's also like the perfect level to actually invest one point into Guardians because you just got Elemental Storm as well. 
And they will have, just like every other thing, like have a chance to spawn that devotion. It's gonna mostly matter only against bosses, right? Because resistance reduction is mostly important against bosses. Uh, also, they will have like a better chance of proccing stuff once they have their aura as well, right? The aura will like tick around them, and well, each tick will also again like have a chance to spawn like an elemental storm. But even like this, right? They already like spawn them with their deep attacks. All right, we're looking for. I mean, there's like another side quest you can do in this area as well, but we're also looking for a. What's it called? Like a like a cave, like a hive cluster. <clears throat> Yo, Merit, guy, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Alright, you always wanna... you can't skip the first cave if you want to, right? But you always wanna enter the second cave. Because the second cave leads to Goddess's cave, and Goddess's cave has a shrine, and you don't wanna miss the shrine. Yeah, it's meant to win one the pole, so we're playing a I Reckoning center right now. And I mean, it's going pretty well so far, I'd say. Definitely. Definitely going well. Okay, more importantly, over here we have the shrine. Uh, Goddess himself can also drop his precious, of course. Uh, we didn't get it there. It's like a chance to drop. Also, this poison hurts a ton, so let's not stand inside it for too much. Okay, devotion point we put into what? We got the elemental storm proc, right? We want to get the Solar's Witchfire proc next as well. Sauron already has the ring. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Sauron was faster, no. Who is the equivalent of Sauron in this game? I feel like... I mean, Lord of the Rings is very... Like, Middle Earth is like very... Centered around only like one... Antagonist, right? Whereas in Grand Dawn you have like multiple. Did I grab an MI metal for level uh, MI weapon for leveling? I'm just using what I got. Um, this is completely solo cell I found, like fresh start, so I'm technically just using what I'm getting, but I did well, like, know where to get the MI weapon, so I went where you can get the MI weapon, like, the easiest way, and uh, I got it. Like, I'm using, like, the first one that I got, I didn't, like, farm that much, you, like, I literally only did, like, one run, but you can, of course, like, do more runs, right, to get, like, whatever apexes you want, and 
on the second hand, I'm using like a sand clone slicer, which I just like, got on the way to like the what's it called? Onarex. I um, basically what I did to like get it ASAP was I went to Forgotten Gods after Act One, right? Then I sided with Solal, and if you side with Solal, then after Vanguard of the Three, you have a quest to go into like a rift here, like a chaos rift here, and you have to like kill a a chthonic corrupted. Um, Rift Claw, right? And he drops a Rift Claw Slicer, but like has a very high chance to drop a Rift Claw Slicer. And I guess we got lucky and got it first run. Uh, so yeah, I'm using it ever since then. Morganath? Nah, no need to go for Morganath yet. Oh yeah, we got a level. What do we do with a level? We just put points to one here, I guess, for more range on the tectonic shift. We just like put one point of volcanic strike because why not, right? And then like push this for. Well, you want to push for Celeste presence and divine mandate, and yeah, exactly. Korak is the only singular big bad. Is Korak actually bad though? Like maybe Korak's not bad. Maybe like the Witch Gods are the ones that are bad, right? Like <laughs> Grimdon is very like very obscure all ones, honestly. Hashtag Korak did nothing wrong. I mean, Korvark is pretty bad, but some of the Witch Gods are also pretty fucking bad, honestly. And, like, Cathon is, in a way, also kind of bad, I guess, but also he also, I mean, at least lore wise, he created the entire world, so, like, without him, the world wouldn't even exist. But then again, maybe that's just, like, something that, well, the followers of Cathon, like, made up. So, I don't know, like. In the end in Grim Dawn, like, all the gods have as much power as the people who believe in them basically give the gods in power by just believing in them, right? Kind of the same as in real life, right? Like, all every god only has as much power as, like, people give the god by believing in him. Moira's Grim Dawn, Sorok. Uh, Sauron. I'm not saying so, what the fuck. Wait, clear out one more egg? Oh my fucking god, dude. How did I miss that? And these eggs, of course, don't count. Oh my god, okay. We're gonna have to like go back and kill one more egg after defeating the amalgamation here. Let's act real quick. Dorkan out? Wait, who is Dorkan out? Was he a regular in your stream? I actually don't remember him. Hey, we got rune singed hand guards. Those are insane. Man. This is also not too bad. Cortosian chest guard, right? I guess Cortosian is better because of the Elras, right? Like, Elras is more important than Bleeras. And this is also Elras. And I have like enough Chaos Rust already, right? Yeah. 69 Chaos Rust. Uh, I mean, we can just get the uh, component again, right? He went missing. Mm. Missing in action. He's bad now. What do we put here now? Maybe like another ancient armor plating, sure. We don't need to like use polished emeralds anymore now. Definitely fine to not use them anymore. Kronos was the father. Who's the father in Grundal? 
and Turion. Cathal. Cathal is kind of like the old father, is it not? Empyrean and Cathal. I don't quite remember actually. But no. And is Korvac like the... Is Korvac like the evil form of Empyrean or something? Or is he like actually a different entity? Father kind of. I mean, yeah, he's the father, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Who is the father? Father Kyle. Oh man, yeah. Can't argue with that, right? Literally called father, so he must be the father. Alright, Amalgamation is a boss, I guess, and uh, it has mechanics, which matter if you don't do damage. Uh, but if you do damage, then I guess the double slam you do when I can actually kind of dodge, right? When he does like slam slam. And also there's this wave, which you kind of want to at least not get hit by all the waves and like you counteract with healing, like using a pot I guess. And then make sure you don't die to aid the ground please. I have to kill one more egg, right? Literally one more egg because I somehow fucked up killing ten eggs in these farms. Instructions unclear. Die to aether ground, right? There was mud. Kill eggs? Are eggs alive? I mean, it depends if they're like fertilized or not. If they are fertilized, they're. I mean, depends of on the definition, I guess. But... Okay, now you have to make a decision, right? To choose Khan's chosen or choose the vigil. It doesn't really matter, I think, for this build. Thematically, I would go with Carmen's Chosen because, like, they are kind of like the fire faction in quotation marks. I mean, not really, but they are kind of. And um, we can also start using this Croner Ring here because it has attack speed, which is Pog, which is pretty nice. And we can also start using Soul Shards, right? From now on, you're gonna go into the Blood Grove. Actually, not quite. Maybe you should like do Pine Barrens first. Um, anyway, for the Blood Grove, right, you're gonna meet lots of, like, Chthonians, and Chthonians deal, well, Chaos and Vitality damage mostly, so you want better, like, more than 19 Vitality resistance. And a good way to get to that is to just use, like, two Soul Shards to get to, for example, like, 59% Vitality resistance. Pretty nice. Pretty nice, indeed. Now let's get to uh, Pine Barrens, right? Korvac is like Kronos. Wait, is Kronos an invading entity? Wait, I feel like Korvac is like lesser of a god than Empyrean or Kathon, like lore wise, is he not? Maybe not. Maybe just feel like that. Or like maybe about the same, but like not above them. Wait, Empyrean killed Cathon with the spear or something like that? Wasn't that like wasn't that the, the lore? Like wasn't Korak like like Cathon like the dad and like Empyrean killed his dad with a spear? I don't know, maybe not. I mean you don't really know, right? Like it's, it's not really like that clear in Grimdon lore. But it has like some parallels, I guess, with like Greek and also, of course, um, like Lovecraftian storytelling for sure. Is Cathon really dead or is he just dying? I mean, he's. Pretty much almost dead, right? But not quite, which is like why 
the photo was Cthon are like trying to regather the blood that Cthon used to create the world to um, like resurrect Cthon, right? Or like to at least heal Cthon, depending on him being actually dead or like almost dead. Pretty sure like Cthon just can't die because like. I mean, in the end, like. I guess he doesn't even exist. <laughs> Why are these healing? What the fuck? Um, but these also are, I guess, pretty fire resistant, right? Compared to other stuff. Like the fire, like the Pine Barrens Desert Grobals are pretty fire resistant, I assume. Ember Clan Grobals. Let's pick up these quests here. Right? Go find Mogara, go find the Venom from the Mint Course. Yeah, I mean, the cult of Cthon at least tells you that, like, Cthon is the creator of all, at least, life in the world, right? Like, all blood belongs to Cthon. That's, like, what they're saying. And whether or not you want to believe what they're saying is another story, but... Like, they say that, like, Cthon... ...is the, like, like, has used his own blood to create the world. Kinda in a way, like... Like the Abrahamitic god, in a way... But, I mean, I guess that one didn't use his blood, he just created the world because he could. And because he can. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the devotion actually sells it, but like, you can't die exactly. Alright, over here we have Mogara. Right, let's not die to Mogara. She can actually slap, right? I'll let her know she can slap, for sure. Um, but yeah, just like, use pots and run around her. Spin around her, rather. And she's gonna drop an amulet, which is this one, which is not really that great for us. Uh, we can ignore it, we're not a soldier. And these Manticore Venoms are gonna like show up as stars on the map until you hand in the quest. But one is enough, you don't need to pick up more than one. You actually cannot pick more than one, right? Does Judgment pull mobs towards you? Yes, it is also good to use on this boat. I'm just not gonna use it yet, or like quite yet. But yeah, it's pretty nice. It will certainly make an appearance on this build. Empyrean is in your basement. Uh, now, you can hand in these quests, right? And like, pick up the next quests. The next quests you can also do in advance, which I'm gonna do here, because I kinda like know where to go. Um, there are two caves in the Shaded Basin, right? There is the Blood Brothers Lair, and there is the Cave of Ungoliax. You wanna basically go to the one that is not marked on the map, right? But that one has like a couple of random spawns, so it might be a little harder for you to find out. Okay, these guys are like actually fire resistant now, holy shit. Uh, let's go down here into the cave. Because this cave will lead into the other cave anyway, so like there's no need to ever like to ever enter the other cave really. Why can't we kill Kami not to completing the DLC? Wait, doesn't he leave? And like, there's another NPC? You don't actually like talk to Father Kaiman anymore in Soros Bastion, do you? Like, do you actually ever talk to Father Kaiman? Yeah, yeah, maybe you can before DLC is right? You can actually check that out, right? Like, maybe you can talk to him before... I'm pretty sure, like, at least after you kill Kolvark and Kaimon, um, you do not talk to Kaimon anymore in his passion. You do before you start F3. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
So just accepting the quest with the emissary already like makes him despawn or what? But yeah, I, d I do remember also like back from the Nether that you like were able to talk to him and like tell him that he's delusional and stuff like that. Yeah, I do actually remember that. You're right. You are very much right about that. Please let me move, thank you. It's a necessary evil to stop the blood swarm. Yeah. I mean, in Korvark, wasn't like, wasn't like Korvark and or Empyrean, or like them together, the one that, uh, or the ones that killed Dying God, like the, the Cathar the Dying God. So, uh, I mean, it makes sense that he wants to stop the blood swarm because they're like gathering blood to resurrect, or like, not to resurrect, but like to, to help Cathar gain power. He reveals the messenger to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. The messenger is behind the door, yeah. True, true. Not enough dynamite. What do you mean? A good thing you can craft dynamite once you have entered at least Homestead or also Forgotten Gods. So let's go to the smith here and craft dynamite. The Devil's Crossing one cannot craft dynamite, but this one can. So let's do that. Come see what's left of my wares. Uh, wait, what about these shoulders? Are they good? Mm, not really. What about Sedekor's Marsh? 10% movement speed? See you I mean, this is actually okay, right? Oops, don't sell Mark of the Travers, what am I doing? Alright, cap movement speed, very nice. Did I craft dynamite? Of course I didn't. Dynamite needs a aether shard though. But you can make aether shards out of like crystals. But it's fine. Yo, Michio Wikman. Is Ravager a god? I mean, honestly, I really like how Grim Dawn does gods because in Grim Dawn, gods are just things or people that believe they are gods themselves and also that have people following them. Right? It's actually very much how it is in real life, to be honest. Like, gods are only if they and the Followers believe that they are gods, and of course, people be like start worshiping entities or other people as gods if they are powerful. But also, they become even more powerful by like people believing in them. So there has to be like some kind of power in the first place, and then there is even more power. Like the gods can like take even more power out of like, the people. Like the followers believing in the mind. It's pretty cool. I really like the concept. Because, I mean, that's kind of how it really is right, with gods. They are gods, but if they bleed, we can kill them. I mean, you don't kill a god, though. I guess also, like, I mean, technically, no god bleeds. Except for Cathon, maybe. The only overless like ever kill avatars or entities of them, right? You never like actually kill the god because the god is just a made up construct in the end. Right? I mean not always, but most of them are. Especially the ones that you cannot kill, which is why they're like the most powerful, right? Like things like Thorn, right? I mean, he's probably just a construct, which is why you cannot kill him. Because he's just like an idea. Whereas the ones that 
like are more like ascended, kind of like Uzuin or or Ravager and so on. Like freaking freaking Uzuin like lost to Bismir like Omega Lorient. I mean, I guess he wouldn't be the only man like losing to Bismir, but still. I mean, Ozuin is just like the god of the Sims, is he not? Alright, maybe I should like stop rambling about like random Grimdon lore. And comment the gameplay instead, but I mean... We are spinning, we are winning. And we're in Tyrant's Hold, about to kill the boss here. The mobs are a little bit tankier here, honestly. Like, these guys are kind of tanky, and being Ember Clan members, they have decent fire rest as well. Um, so, not having fire resistance reduction from anything so far is starting to get a little bit noticeable, right? Like, you want fire, resi uh, fire resistance reduction on vulnerability, you want it on the Guardian Celestial Presence aura, you want it on devotions, and the only thing we have right now is just Elemental Storm. So, that's like not really a lot right now. We're starting to like feel that we like this guy for example. He's even he's even burning, so like he doesn't. He's like additional fire rest, I think, because he's burning. Um. So yeah, the raw damage that we have is insane, but against resistant enemies, that's kind of hard right now. It won't be that hard once we have Celeste presence then. And we could maybe even like get there a little bit quicker by taking some points on somewhere else. But where the maybe we take on some points when we rebuke after all. Maybe it's not quite as good to scale rebuke right now. Oh someone set on fire who's already burning, exactly. Flame round. Oh, this one is really nice as well, actually. This is really good. Holy moly. What the fuck. Flame round is an insane weapon for our reckoning. For fire, our reckoning. Level 43, yep. It's a pretty lucky drop, honestly, getting that at like level 34 already. And it's kind of a common drop, but like getting it this early already is kind of poor. Kind of lucky, I guess. Uh, this guy hurts, though, right? He actually hurts. <laughs> He actually hurts a lot. He's he's literally ruthless, right? That's what he is. He is literally ruthless. Holy fuck, dude! Yeah, this hurts a bit in that room. Not gonna lie. Also, I do have somewhat low HP for my level, do I not? Yeah, I do. Wanna get famous? Wanna get banned, Megafer? You want Bloodsworn followers? <laughs> I don't know why I want to do is like killing everything around them, like spilling blood left and right. Just to like pretend that they're helping. Alright. We're not gonna do old scars quite yet, I think. What if we kill followers, wouldn't it make them weaker and e with each follower killed? Yeah, I mean, that's uh... That's kinda how it works, right, isn't it? It might not be the most humane way to do it, but it is a way. Uh, that's kinda like how also like one religion spreads over another, usually. In general. He doesn't need followers. Pretty sure every god needs followers and even Cthon. Alright, we take out points from rebu uh, Rebuke. Uh, it wasn't quite as strong, I guess, as I thought. At this level, at least. 
And we're gonna put points to Divine Mandate and uh, Celestial Presence. Divine Mandate is yet again another like passive. We can put it on yeah, like somewhere in the bar. That's totally fine, right? There we go. You were thinking to make dual wield Aether Warped Cleaver Cadence build. You think it will work? Um, it should work, yeah. But isn't isn't like at least using one mind warp better than dual wielding them? Because otherwise you have like no resistance reduction whatsoever. And especially if you're playing a battle mage, I think you like need. I mean, dual wielding those Aether Warp Cleavers though. Wait, is Aether Warp Cleaver? It's the Aether one, right? Or is it the physical one? Because like, there's another one that's like called almost the same. And uh, I think it's like also called something with Aether, but it's actually like dealing physical damage, right? Wait, which one is which again? Are you talking about the physical one or the Aether one? Oh, physical. Okay, never mind then. Uh, yeah, that's that one is even better, honestly. But is it better than like full Warborn? I feel like for Cadence you need Warborn, and then like yes, you can use that item in the second slot. Uh, I guess if you are a class that does not want to use Baronov, like Mythical Baronov Sword, right? <clears throat> Rip Kerb Blanc. Rip indeed. I'll watch it later. May the light of Empyrean guide your path. Hmm. Oh, it has like Blade Master bonus songs. The Gothian Shears. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's fine as a one off, yeah. It's fine as a one off on the classes that don't need Baron of Conversion. Alright, uh, find the seals. Brother Miranok. Alright, yeah, you speak to Father Kaiman here instead of Brother Miranok whenever um, you haven't started the DLCs yet, I think, right? Yeah, Warborn duo with one cleaver. Like, one cleaver and Warborn is fine. But dual cleaver is worse than Warborn and cleaver. I think. Yeah, Titan. Uh, Kerplank does play hardcore. Titan Quest technically doesn't have hardcore, but he just like deletes the character when he dies. At least, I mean, not all of them. Like he basically like tags the characters when he creates them as like softcore or hardcore, and if it's tagged as softcore, then he doesn't delete them. If it's tagged as hardcore, then he does delete them. Like self imposed hardcore kind of. Oh shit, I should have maybe not burned her. Oh well. <laughs> Whoops. Rest in peace. Innocent witch. I am sorry. But I guess I am a follower of uh, Imperion and Korvac after all. And Kaiman. It's not the same if you don't get the ghost of your character. Yeah. A fake core. Are we getting scammed here? Scammed for some dynamite? Kind of it. Chose the wrong prey this time. And doesn't Kerplank like usually die in Act One though? No offense, but holy fuck, I see him like Act One all the time. 
I only have 200 armor, it might be a little low, is it? Ah, uh, it should be fine, yeah. But these manticores hurt a bit. They do indeed hurt. Alright, in the blood grove, right? This area can be a little, like, confusing sometimes. Um, you wanna go for... Farmers, right? You wanna save farmers. You wanna also maybe, like, get the waypoint here, sure. But if you got the waypoint before doing the other quest, you need to like go back here and like go back here. Uh, the farmers and the seals and so on. I mean, the seals I guess you can find anywhere, but the farmers and also Bolvar and the shrine are before the way guide, like the rift gate, right? Um, yeah, if you're sided with Kaiman's Chosen, you want to kill Bolvar as well. If you're sided with. Also, oh yeah, five Black Legion insignias, right? I keep forgetting about this. Why didn't I pick up those side quests, by the way? What am I doing? Oops. And I guess you can do the side quest without picking up the quest. Kinda. Like, five Black Legion insignias and... Yeah, what's it called? Like, the Gryas Mill. Which is past the Rift Gate. Can you help me with how to farm Nex and Ortos Legendaries? They are random loot. So the best way to farm them would be... I mean the very best way to farm them would be Shattered Realm and Crucible. But like you need to do like proper high shards and like proper high level Crucible as well. Otherwise it's not that good. Um, other than that... Well... Just do dungeons and totems, right? Like farm totems and run dungeons, like skeleton key dungeons. It's like it's like the best way to to uh, get like random loot. Oh yeah, also yeah. If you if you find a duplicate of the same one, you can like re-roll. You can transmute duplicate into like the other sword in Forgotten Gauls, right? There's like a like a feature that can do that. Or like a feature that enables it rather. And then you can also do it in the inventor in Devil's Crossing. Alright, so we killed Bolvar. And Bolvar is actually very important for us both because Bolvar drops the Bolivar's Pendant, and Bolivar's Pendant, sure, it's like Vitality and Bleed Damage primarily, which you don't care about, however, it also gives you plus one to all skills in Oathkeeper, and we are using quite some skills in Oathkeeper, right, so this is pretty good. So this is kind of like a auto pickup, like an auto equip, and if you don't have this, like if you didn't get it rather, if it didn't drop for you, then feel free to like reset the session and like farm him from the Blood Grove Rift. He's gonna like spawn somewhere around here usually. Um, yeah, let's use that. And we're gonna use the. Actually, let me rescue the farmers real quick as well. And we need five Black Legion signals. We have two on right now. We need like more of those then. I'm gonna click more, like click on more bodies. There we go. There's also Chaos Rift here, which you can enter, but it's entirely optional at the stage of the game. You really don't have to go in there. And it's maybe also like unnecessarily rippy even. Uh, one more, right? What the heck? What the heck? There's one corpse in there. Alright, let's go back to... To what? To the respect... Uh, actually, to the invent inventor, right? Can you ask something? I mean, yeah, sure, you can always ask anything. Need something broken down? Feel free to ask away. Be safe out there. I'll give you a good price of what I've got left. Alright, after that experience in the fort that we just were in earlier. 
I think we're gonna max out the Celestia Presence Aura Resist- like the Resistance Reduction from Aura of Sensor. I mean, what am I saying? The Resistance Reduction from Celestia Presence, holy shit, uh, before the exclusive skill Divine Mandate, right? Every time you put skill points into this, however, you will have to resummon your Guardians, which is a little bit annoying. But like, the sooner you do this, the sooner you're gonna be done with it as well. So, yeah. Let's go back to who? I can go to Captain Somer, I guess. <clears throat> you see a living door in the last mission of DLC 1? Yes. It only opens in Ultimate Difficulty. And in Ultimate Difficulty, there is a quest that you need to pick up before being able to I open it. And that quest is located in the Coven's Refuge. There's like an NPC there that will give you a quest, if you're an automate. Okay. The lady you save in Bloodgrove will give you that one? Actually, that's not quite correct. It's the lady next to the lady that you save in the Bloodgrove. They're actually two different NPCs, but they're like next to each other, yes. It opens all difficulties? Really? I don't think so, actually. But maybe I'm actually wrong as well. I thought it's ultimate only. I mean, either way, uh, check the lady in the coven. You only get the point in ultimate. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I just thought it's like ultimate only because it's like only worth it to open an ultimate. So like I ever only do it in ultimate and I feel like it's never worth it to do like in the lower ones. So like I just automatically don't do it in the lower ones. We could try it on this character like once we get there like next episode I guess. We could try opening the door in normal. Oh, it always opens. Okay, I'm I'm wrong then actually. My bad. You were able to open both portals for John Bourbon and Lokar. Very nice, very nice. Did you also defeat the bosses though? That is the actual question. Right? Alright, I think I also might need to get like more leech soon, right? Like after getting the torch devotion, I mean not torch, the uh, witch fire devotion, I'm gonna get probably ghoul, right? Not a Grimdon veteran, I was wrong. Yeah, I don't know, like actually I've I think never ever done the quest on anything but ultimate, so I thought it's only ultimate. For some reason. I mean, it's only worth it to do an ultimate right because of the skill point. I really have to check this out on this character then. You can't see Rugi on the cover. Uh, then you didn't look properly yet. Oh yeah, same for me, Plasma. I got an email, I think, yesterday. 7th of August, indeed. Yep, they're already sold out. Chthonians can be a little scary sometimes, especially like with this low vitality resistance and like 
with Harbingers doing their thing with Spectrum Miasma and even more like Resistance Reduction, right? They can yeah, put your Resistance from like 59 to 30, for example. Like cutting it in half, basically. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy indeed. So will you be devastated if she gets the sold out email? Um, I don't know, I think I'm pretty sure they always like, once you've ordered one, you always get one. You saw her? Alright, perfect. Yeah, you, once you have the quest, you can go back into the Fleshworks and open the door. Plushy for you, Sash. Hmm. Pretty sure they're gonna do like another plushy session at some point. Another plushy event, maybe. Or maybe that's gonna be like another way to get a plushy for you. You want miniatures based on masteries? Oh, that would be really nice as well, actually. I also have heard rumors about people wanting body pedals based on John Bourbon. <laughs> or Scorv. <sighs> Silla body pedal. Alright, one more. One more. Korvac body pillow. You can like cuddle it and then it says like doom 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 doom. Yeah, sounds about right, right? Sounds about right. Hidden spoils down here. If you're interested in random trash bit, sounds good. I should really like upgrade my what like my helmet at some point. Or shouldn't I? Like this helmet wouldn't be that bad actually. The resilience one, mighty of spines. I mean that's fucking pierce damage. Why the fuck is it pierce damage? Though? Hmm. I could farm this as well, I guess. Like resilience, cooldown is pretty nice to have. And it's like elemental damage, right? It's not too bad. If it rolls with like fire damage, perfect. But it probably didn't. King Shaming, very toxic. Why'd I go for Sentinel versus Shebreaker? Um, Sentinel can keep spinning better than Shebreaker. Shebreaker needs to like throw cocktails, throw flashbang, throw thermite mine. Sentinel can just like use Curse of Reality once and then chill. Right. I 
I should also, I guess, like one point ascension now that I have also like bonus skills to all of old people. And I mean, Sentinel has uh, like three. I mean, okay, that's like the same attack speed, I guess, ish as Demo. And then it has like three poison visitors as well. I mean, yes, it doesn't have the percent fire skating that Demo has, but other than that, it's like. I don't know. I feel like it has all the other stuff. That's Tree Breaker House. Kind of. It doesn't have Blast Shield though. Like, Blast Shield is really big on Tree Breaker for sure. Really, really big. Oh yeah, also Rift Claw Slicers convert Vitality Damage to Fire, which means you can like also max out second right and get like a bit damage. Like fire damage, like flat fire damage on uh, second right. Actually, part of Kane as well. Hold it. Our canes are scary. They can throw a purple orb that nullifies you. You don't want to get nullified. There it is. Demonic Red on us. Holy fuck, dude. If this was like an endgame item, it would be GG. Like, literally GG item right here for endgame. Like, if this was like endgame level with like endgame affixes. It's level 40, so it's like unfortunately not that good, but. Oh, it would be amazing for endgame. Arcane Body Pillow to dispel your, dispre your depression and shit. Feels bell man. Feels body pillow man. A Logorian poof chair. <laughs> uh, that's actually hilarious as well. The Logorian chair. Spinning to win, are we? Yes, we are actually. It's pretty decent. Good, you're back. Yo, Theos, welcome back, welcome back. Spin to win a Ricarte by Y5BOG. Hello everyone, hope you all have fun. Now back to lurking. <laughs> thanks for the resub, Theos. And thanks for lurking as well. 10 months already. Holy moly. Thank you so much for the support. And Garen and Grim Dawn, bad chest. <laughs> <laughs> Memes are not funny, yo, welcome in. XD, bad chest. Yep, Garen built bad chest. Back to, I guess that was crossing real quick. See anything you like? Ancient of Thorns. Hmm. I mean, the armor would be good, but the rest, kind of questionable. By the way, where do I get a plus one Oathkeeper belt again? It's like Forgotten Gods factions, right? Like a craftable one. Should be Forgotten Gods factions. I know Thorns is retaliation, right? It's kinda garbage. Kinda garbage, right? FG before Korok. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean the the gargoyle belt. True, that would be there as well. Dude, I don't know. Like for safety reasons, I would just honestly just play bad, right? Like just play bad. 
instead of Aether Fire. Like, sure, Aether Fire is cool and all. But, like, to keep sustaining, I think we just play that later. Like, we get the bit to fire here, bit to fire on the other axe as well. And then, like, here's the fire on the belt, and we just, like, play bad, right? But we can probably play a craftable belt until then as well. Um, Karos, which, which we just killed, right, was the boss of Act 3, by the way. So we are officially entering Act 4 now. Uh, we're just gonna get to the Rift Gate here and then go back to um, Homestead. And also I'm gonna have to check out the Wender, or like the faction Quartermasters and Forgotten Gods around it before that even. For the, well, blueprint for the craftable belt, if we can get it. Uh, yep. Yeah. No, that's actually Endurance Relic. Fuck. We can also buy it, of course, but... We need to use the Dual Wield Relic, right? At least for now. Hmm... How do you how do you get the belt though? Come see what's left of my wares. Wait, there's just no craftable belt, I guess for keeper, right? Okay, it took a while to find the info, but I thought I had read info on Cathon from other NPCs. Three gave information. Alright, and Asteria, the messenger, and the messenger. Through Cathonian worship, uh, though Cathonian worship was not a new prospect to Cairn, desperate humans made willing allies for the powers of Cathon, and, then, and so an old enemy has returned to haunt us and may well spell doom for us all. Exactly. If now as we slaughter one another, the void feeds upon the spilling blood and grows to envelop, uh, to envelop all of creation. That is what Anasteria says, the well, lady in for the icon, right? The ethereal in for icon. You know it only as Cathon, whose blood courses through your veins as it does in every living being. But the dead god, I mean, I guess the messenger of Korvac wishes he was dead, right? But the dead god yearns to return from the void. It calls to its blood, gathers that someday soon Cathon will be reborn. Ill blood, all life. Cathon's worshippers gather it, give the dark, now the dead god, the strength to tear through the barrier between worlds. But as Cathon grows bolder, so too does Korvac rally his strength. Cairn shall become the better ground upon which the gods shall, shall settle their conflict. I wonder if uh, like Korvac somehow is an ethereal. <laughs> I mean, he's not, right? Or like, how he like somehow maybe like uses the ethereals as like well, his army in, in some way right um, let's actually do it like this real quick and put like ascension over here okay we can talk to uh Soros bastion as well belt is dreek Oh, that is Dreeg. Thanks, Island Stones. I'll give you a good price on what I've got left. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, you can oh, it's level sixty five, though, right? That was sixty five. I mean, okay, that's like far away, like very far away. I guess it really doesn't matter that much then. What is the song? It's just um, the first song in this uh, playlist right here. I mean, it's like index 22, yes, but then like in that um, song, like the, or like in that compilation, like the first one. We've done all these quests. 
pretty good. It's the root sandstorm. Oh yeah, true. Did that one guy on the forum pay those 200 millions to create like he promised? Wait, who? I, I remember I remember vaguely who you're talking about, but I don't quite remember what you wanted Kray to do. Why do you have let's see? I've already am You're here with a Very funny and incoherent. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember that part as well, but. What he actually wanted, I don't quite remember. Did he want to actually, like, give Crate 200 million or something? But money? Five more levels for flame brand, and also we do actually need cunning for flame brand. Yeah, maybe it was that guy, yeah. <laughs> make, me, <laughs> make the game scale all the way to level 300 and like... All that shit went. What the fuck. <laughs> like, he, he didn't even want Grimdon 2, he w wanted like straight away Grimdon 3, right? Yeah, just, just do it, right? Like, what's the problem? Just make my number go bigger. You got him. Oh, feedback for dev is important. Please read noobs. <laughs> Has to be Setar. The thing is, like, he has tons of those posts. Like, it's not his only post, I think. Like... I mean, it can still be Setar, right? I want you to know after a few years of shows, after I make my first 200 million, I wanna pay you Create Entertainment to make a unique special edition version of Chrome Dawn. <laughs> uh, hey, what does Zantai respond again?
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he would just lose his sanity, like, trying to do all of that in Grim Dawn. Punctuation not found. Right. Oh. Fuck. Bone chill. Who's the other guy? Oh my god, dude. Whoops. <laughs> Not die to freaking what's he called? Ragrathar. <laughs> oh shit. Alright. Um Yeah, I got a feeling, and that feeling is we certainly need more sustain. And we need better sustain. Probably earlier we need better sustain than how we have it right now. I feel like Impfire, sure, it's cool and all, but it's not damage that we need, right? We need more tank in us and leech. See, the shitpost shit post almost killed me by losing focus. Yeah, kinda. Alright, so, yeah, TLDR, we need more healing. Um, Okay, Toast will have more healing through Breath of the Week later, yes, but we really need to like spec into the stuff right now. Um, which leaves us with Leech. Which we can get from Devotions. Right. We need to finish the... Hmm. Yeah, we really do have to finish... So last Blush Blade. I think I need to like really... Um, Clean up my devotions a lot. They're a little messy right now. Like I need to remove the viper points maybe for now. I don't really need the leech right now, like the energy leech anymore right now. Um, I will pick viper later again, yes, but right now it's not really needed, right? And um, then I should also get like Google, right? So, um, I guess we we can go back right here, right? We just got a rift gate. Let's go to Tellus Crossing and respec. I really want Bat and Ghoul, honestly, like the Madly special. Not even kidding, that's really what I want here on this belt, because the gun, like the weapon just converts and uh, that's pretty good. I might also like just farm another weapon, honestly. Like I'm level 38, my weapon is level 26 now. It's, it's starting to fall off. And we really also need that Gargoyle's Waste Guard. And I'm not sure... Hmm. Hmm. I guess you should do this like after Act 3 is done, right? After killing Keros, you should just go back to Forgotten Gods again. And... Um, Safe journey. Like you should get... Your mind of regret. Okay, let's do it like this for now, right? Safe journey. Let me put this on. Let me put this on like virus might, I guess for now. And then we want to get uh, magi, right? So like spider attack speed would be next, I guess. Safe journey. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can also uh, remove this again. Complete crown, right? Remove this here. And then we have. Um, hmm, kind of like too many greens, right? Actually, do we even want spider then? We want um, we want 15 green in total. We're gonna get three more from Magi. Like we're trying to get to Magi right now. Um, so Magi is three, right? It's like three um, plus three is six. That's 14 green. We need one more than that. So we could go for just like I guess Scholar's Light is not too bad right now. Like Scholar's Light would be fine for now. Like it's not really that amazing end game, but it's fine for now. Let's pick up Scholar's Light. And then we pick uh, Magi, and then we pick Torch, right? I mean, rather we pick Magi, we pick Viper, and then Torch. And we also didn't pick Ghoul because we're Pepega. I was talking about picking Ghoul, right? <laughs> I mean... Stay strong. This is Ghoul right here. I sense turmoil within you. And I guess we... Do it like this then for now. Rest in peace, all those Aether Crystals. Holy fuck. There we go. This looks good. Fox's Leech. Yeah. But like with Fire, you don't want to play Fox, I think. Like the bleed on it's, it's like completely useless. Alright, let's get uh, another Rift Close Lancer, I think. Like, the good thing about using a Forgotten God's weapon is, like, you can go here very early and, like, get a very low level one. And you can also go here a lot later and enemies will all scale with you because, well, this is Forgotten Gods and it's, like, supposed to be played at some point between Act 1 and 6. Or, like, between Act 2 and 6, so. Uh, or, like, even after Act 6. So the scaling is there for all of these areas. So we lost um, the Empire, right? But like, look at look at Bat, right? Look at my health bar here, like... <laughs> Bat is just like, healing me up so quickly again. Like, you just have to like, play Bat, right? Kinda. I don't know, like the Leech from Ghoul that we got, and like also Bat on top, is just really good. And my Bat, yeah, it's like not needed more done, right? We need a... Um, like the Gargoyle belt to further support the uh, like bad devotion as well. Do I use Bear? I don't use Bear now. Why would I use Bear? This is fire damage after all, right? There is a armor reduction debuff. Right, you don't need that in fire. Searing of the Flame Calder, I mean, that is an item, right? That is certainly an item, level 40. Alright, I'll take it. You use Bear because Ruxo said so? Yikes. Where can I farm Gargoyles, guys? It's behind Father Kaim, right? I should really like get more Aether Rest, like what is this resistance? 8%? Well, main account do I have nearly all purple items? Yeah. I think I have like all random ones. I have uh... I'm just, I'm just like missing some of the um, Magi rings. Because I never really like farmed too much Heretic like that excessively. But I have like all much all out like all legendaries, yeah. Apart from like some of the rings. But you can go through here. Oh interesting.
If you convert 30% physical, is it not worth to take bear for healing? I mean, bear is like devotion wise at the other end of the. Like, it's like 10 miles away, right? Like, you don't really go here. And, uh. I mean, bear only refreshes, it doesn't stack. Yo. Have an answer right home, Plasma. Thanks for being here. See you around, man. May Veteran treat you well. Yeah. I mean, the Yeti kind of like gave me a proper slap in my face right now. Um, mostly due to, I guess, 0% physical resistance. <laughs> Uh, 200 armor and not having good leech, right? I mean, Sentinel will have more physicals later, right? Once you get like Aspect of the Guardian up, like this one here. But it kind of like needs more points. Korvac, save me! <laughs> indeed, indeed. I mean, this would also help, maybe, right? Crit damage and physical resistance to ascension. And like higher armor values as well. Or just like an upgrade here. I mean, yeah, armor values are just bad. Like, I need to upgrade my gear, right? Like, what am I doing? Oh, we found Scorch Rune Leg Wraps. This is nice. Okay, we have like tons of gear for level 40 actually. That's gonna be huge upgrade to level 40. I'll get more Fizzrust as a ghost. I'm saving Fizzrust for next character, right? That's the meme, I guess. Yo, Psy, welcome. And Rob Bar, how are you guys doing? You set yourself a challenge to get every blue item and purple item. I have no idea how much work if you could. Uh, yeah, do the same challenge, but like only mythical items, like endgame items. Like getting the level 50 blues and so on is a pain, to be honest. Like getting all of the level 50 purples and so on is just, I don't know. I mean, if you like it, sure, you can still do it, of course, but. Yeah, I think Mike actually did that as well. Mike at some point wanted to do that. I'm not sure if he like actually was successful or not, but... Uh, we don't have to go in this one, I think. There's no shrine in this one. Uh, you can go in there if you want to, of course. It's really not needed right now. Yeah, Mike was a. Uh, um, this is how far we've gotten now, guys. Like, people already don't know who Mike is. He's bad, man. Uh, Mike was like a pretty regular Dawn Dawn streamer. Until last year's December, I guess. Like, basically, yeah, he stopped like streaming this year. Mike was. Yeah, he's, he's in my cellar now, right? Like in my basement. He's locked up in my basement. Such an inspiration with this year of resting. Yeah, honestly, like... Yeah. It took a year off just to like game and uh, well, I guess uh, I 
I cater towards his early midlife crisis. Like quarter life crisis, third life crisis, whatever you want to call it. Yo, Migok, welcome on, welcome on. Create will have to fix their celestial blue items for the Holy Grail to work. Wait, celestial blue items. Wait, you mean the, wait, the rings? Wait, what are you talking about? Which item exactly? Or like which items exactly? Do I think I would try Crate's Tomb Raider? Uh, I'm a playtester for the Tomb Raider game. I don't really play the game right now that much, but... Officially, I am a playtester. Like, I got it for free because... Like, of my doings in Grim Dawn, I guess. You can't get the level 94 blue color helmet, for example. Oh yeah, true, 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 true. That even exists. Oh, talking about color, Corvin's secrets just pog. Paid crate shell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I wish. I wish I was fucking paid. I wish I was paid, dude. The only people that I'm paid by is, uh. Well, you guys, basically. Like, Twitch Primes, Standard Subs, uh, watching my ads on YouTube, I guess. Or YouTube, like, ads. Or, like, YouTube memberships. On my channel. Or Patreon, like you can also support me on Patreon if you want to, right? Like, nobody else is paying me really. Watching ads. I mean, don't watch, like, I don't know, like, I mean, I don't want to support watching ads really. But YouTube ads actually are a, like, like a decent percentage of my income, like when it comes to streaming on YouTube, like unironically. Um, Twitch ads, on the other hand, are absolute like zero impact. <laughs> like they're just, I don't know why they even exist, dude. I mean, I know why they exist, but they don't really like benefit the streamer that much unless you have like a shit ton of viewers. Then ads are like actually good. But if you're like a small streamer, I don't know whether it's even like ads on like ads on streams for small streamers. Honestly, like I don't know. Kind of belt. I mean, you, if you become like a YouTube member, like get like a membership, and just kind of like being a sub on YouTube, like being a member on YouTube is like, like the same thing as being a sub on Twitch, right? And being a sub on YouTube is like the same as being a follower on YouTube uh, on Twitch, right? Um, so if you are like a member on YouTube of a certain channel, then you don't get any ads on that channel anymore, right? So. Yeah, if you don't want to watch ads, but still support the streamer or like the YouTuber, then I guess that's like the best way to do it. Always appreciate your streams. <laughs> Yo, I think ten dollars as well, married guy. Thank you so, so much for the tip. Thank you so much, man. Very much appreciate it. And I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, tips are another way to to support me as well. I mean, I guess you. Like, people call them, like, donations most of the time, but I guess technically you wouldn't call them donations, like, you shouldn't call them donations because, like, streams aren't really a charity or anything like that, right? Like, you're not, like, donating to a charity, but, yeah. I mean, thank you so much either way, right? Thank you so, so much. What, did, what do we do with Cinder Vane Mantle, guys? Cinder Vane Mantle plus two Virus Might. Pierce Ross, Chaos Ross. 
Like the only thing that's like better than my incendiary shoulder guards right now is higher armor, right? Like the only reason why I would pick these right now. And maybe like the pierce runs. But like percent fire is lower. It doesn't have the DA. Crushing verdict of virus smite. I mean honestly crushing verdict is better even though I don't even use the skill right now. That's how bad like plus the virus smite is for me right now. Kind of. Hmm. Yeah, I guess at level 40 we're gonna have like some upgrades here and there. Uh, they are mostly. Wait, I think I lost uh, the context. Uh, what what is mostly what? Donations? Or, or like Twitch streams are like considered charities? Maybe. Honestly, I don't. I don't know. Like. I'm not that good with like Diga stuff to be honest. Donation is appropriate. Tips an additional amount given in exchange for good service above what was expected. A donation is amount given to support something you enjoy agree with. I mean yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I guess yeah, it does it does is I mean it is the right word then I guess. The word does fit. TV channels board broadcasters on TV. Nobody ever would have donated to those people. Subs equals viewers, donations equals I don't know. To get the grants, that's a new phenomenon. Hmm. Kinda. I mean, don't like. I mean. Private TV channels are just the same as Twitch, right? Like, they just get money through, like, ads playing on their channel. And, like, they get money depending on, like, how many viewers they have. Which is why, like, most of the private channels are, like, full of ads non-stop all the time, right? Whereas the, like, usually, like, state-driven uh, news channels are not full of ads. Or like don't have as much as, as many ants at least, right? So we got the upgrade to the blade swarm, the blade dancer that has none, but honestly it really doesn't matter that much which one you use here. Okay, I did this because I thought that maybe here's gonna be some gargoyle spawning, but there were no gargoyle spawning here I guess. Oh well. There's like zero gargoyles in like normal FG. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's actually keep this act as it is up like right now. I maybe reset and get another with Claw Slicer. Right? Maybe do that. To ensure prompt service is what tip means and originated way back in the day when tips were put in the table before a meal is served, not after. Oh, right, true, they were like impromptu. I mean, uh, like before. Uh, 
a server makes an error, a portion of the tip would then be removed during service. Ah, okay. Interesting. Hashtag no pressure. A uh, thing that also takes into the streamers start out doing it for fun, and then it's semi work and you get more into it. If you hit it big, it's your job at income. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely like being in the, in the like, semi work uh, category for, for a long time now. Which, honestly. Um, it's tons of fun, but like financially and security wise, it's definitely like not the best spot to be in. Um, yeah, but that's that's okay. I uh, if I if I weren't able to like continue doing this, I wouldn't do it right. Um, and middle equals I count numbers, not caring about community or quality. Wait, what? Uh, donation slash gifts the most important in that middle phase where people transition from no work to work a streamer. So in that sense, middle streamers equals donation equals income equals taxable because it counts as income at least in over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean donations are basically taxable. Yeah. Yeah, same here. And middle equals I count numbers, not caring about community or quality. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like the streamer doesn't care about his quality and quantity? I'm pretty sure if you're like in the middle category and you don't care about like your community or like your quality, of, then you're just not never gonna like get to the actual like big phase. Right. I don't know. I feel like once you're in that like bigger spot, then you. I don't know. I, 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 I feel like the streaming market is pretty brutal. Like you always have to like care about your content. Or, like know what your viewers also want to see if you want to be like successful at like some point. Uh, what is this charge of scorch runes? That's also fine, right? Sure, we have like two rift claw slicers. If I didn't sell the other one, because I'm fucking retarded, am I not? Oh my god, I sold the other Rift Claw Slicer, right? Holy shit, oh, I'm so blind. <laughs> or did I not? Wait, am I level 40? Did I... I stopped paying attention to the game at some point here a bit. What am I doing? Okay, so this is definitely an item. And I definitely lost the other one. So I guess I just sold it. Oops, let's farm it again then. It was actually a pretty good one, right? Wasn't it like searing prefix as well? Fuck man. Oh. Yo computer, welcome, welcome. On. Yeah, this place is a little brutal on veteran, not gonna lie. At least with like like my semi scuffed uh, damage with like level twenty items at level forty. But... And last word of text from you. It's not in stash storage. I don't think I put anything to stash. Dude, this fucking mobs are brutal.
What the swells are doing? Chilled of the arcane blaze, really. That's like not good, but okay. Hmm. Hmm. I kinda wanna do another one. Fire skill that goes forward. Uh... Oh, you mean... You mean the one that kinda looks like obsidian spines, but, but red and fiery and stuff? It is unfortunately not available to the player now. Okay, one thing coming to mind about the transitioning phase. Start out happy in the bishops, equals people enjoy. Same at work. You have some expectation, but it's fun. You enjoy it, but it's starting to become something you need to do job. You have a lot of expectations and have to be accountable and available you need and need to be there. It's a huge undertaking while offering rewards. I would be scared shitless going the full mile. Takes as a run. He needs to stream at least 220 hours a month in his contract to Twitch. That's insane and way more than your full-time job. But he seems to enjoy it since he averages 300 a month. To me, it's insane. 300 a month? It's like 10 hours a day, right? Every single fucking day, holy. I mean, if you're getting paid well. But I mean, even then, right? It's like just not healthy, honestly. Is that the skill that those, uh, like, Korvac followers do in the Forgotten Gods act? Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I really don't know if, like, those numbers are actually true or not, right? Yes. Warped of the Flame Caller. Dude, why did I keep on... Dropping with non-fire prefixes, what the hell? What the hell, dude? Oh, he does a lot, okay. Which is funny, because like some people have told me that they are not even allowed to do that. Due to their contract, like the contract sells, like tells them to not talk about the contract. At least that's like what some people have told me. That maybe just didn't want to like show their contract, I don't know. Like talk about their contract. Uh, dude, I feel like just taking this instead right now. Eh, maybe not, actually. Never mind. We're also gonna use Scorch Rune Leg Wraps. Ideally, but like resistances are Monka. Monkas. We can do these for sure, yeah. I mean, losing 15 fire damage or whatever. They have like way more armor, plus the rebuke, which is I think disability here. That's flat, flat, like flat damage, that's fine. Um, yeah, let's use this one. Still gonna use Market of Traveler, of course, though. And then what else? Well, I guess we're gonna like equip these for now. Both of them. Uh, but I kinda wanna keep farming the boss, though, because the ones that I have are. I guess not that good. Why did I pick the damage reduction node? Uh, I didn't get to it yet, but I obviously should run it. Generally, like percent damage reduction is better later, but I mean it's still at least a one point right for now. 
Yeah, honestly, I don't know why I didn't pick it yet. <laughs> I kind of like got lost in conversations, I guess. And forgot about it. I sense turmoil within you. Stay strong. At least one point, right? For now. It's kind of a problem with the resistances right now, still. I mean, these shoulders. Let's see here. Eh. Sorters are kinda not even that great, right? The pants certainly are better, but I also need to like get there in the first place. Okay, let's put the stuff in here and then What do we do next now? We wanna maybe farm another claw. It's like this is warped. And chilled. I also really need another belt, like holy fuck that was uh, outdated. Kind of outdated. I could check the shrine in Corvin Subterrant. You meant like this attack, right? This year. Trolling again by playing in veteran? What do you mean? Dude, I was playing normal earlier and it was like... It was like boringly easy. Like super duper easy. I don't know, man. But yeah, at home you can play a normal rat. You bought Chrome Donut all experience uh, expansions rather months ago. Have under 20 hours in it. You really like pets and feel like they're fine Chrome Donut. Can you or chat point me in the direction of a perma minion build? If possible, I don't want to constantly respawn them. You would rather buff debuff. Yeah, it sounds like you don't like skeletons. Because skeletons would be like respawning skeletons a lot. Because they die quite quickly. Um, so just play a conjurer, right? Like play a shaman and octotust. Then you play like Briarthorn. Mostly focus, like focus most on Briarthorn. Like use Hellhound and um, the Raven to like support your Briarthorns. And also, I mean, the Promise Spirit, temp temporary pattern shaman is also fine, I guess. Oh yeah, I mean, Brathorn would be like your main pet, basically. Comes also in poison variety in some monsters. True, true, true. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool looking, but it's not available to the player now. It is not available to the player.
Okay, energy is really getting kind of bad here, isn't it? And my health is also a little low. I really need to like put uh, points to aspect of the guardian. Like get to the aspect and like put points there, I guess. Huh. Okay, this shrine didn't spawn any like gargoyles either, right? Did I grab the shrine and something noises? I did. Hmm. Are a little low. Yeah, Aether is a little low. <laughs> Eight percent. Now is not. I do not. As long as you're not inside of like Mammoth, I guess it's fine and normal, right? Slept. You will go no further. Don't look at bells and ground tools, they're all garbage, my what? Hey, we got the best pants in the game. <laughs> At least for leveling. But I have 1% DA. That's pretty garbage. But th these are good, right? Very, very, very good generic pants. Like Press of Header, right? Just get them. My advice for you, if you're a new player to the game, just get them, right? <laughs> Alright, what can I say? They are pretty good. I need better stun rests as well, right? Like, what is this? Uh, these are actually... this actually... Yeah, stronger. Okay, time to sell the stun because I have better boots now. Um, life bloom bound. Just health, like 500 health. I mean, honestly, 500 health? Wouldn't be that bad, but... Hmm. Purging of blight. Hmm. Formidable of spines. Hmm. No, 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 no. Vigorous of attack, elemental damage, shoulders. Okay, these, however, are pretty interesting, are they not? Yeah, because, like, the more LOS I get, um, I could like remove a. I could remove a wardstone if I had like actual movement speed on it, which I don't right now. Hmm. Now, Vendor doesn't have any experience gain, but just great defensive stats. Pretty nice pants are pretty OP. Mm, they're not too bad actually. They're okay. 
They're just okay, as the description implies, but I think they're just okay. Just okay. We want to play something like this. I mean, it needs like 300 spirit, though. Hmm. I certainly need more health, right? Like, that's one problem with Sentinel. Like, it doesn't really have that much health. Because especially the Occultus class doesn't really provide you any health. It's kind of low on health. Wait, did I sell the other pants that had uh, the scaled hide on them? Oh, that was ancient armor plating, never mind. Never mind then. Let's craft another scaled hide to like bring that absorption up to 100%. Oops. There we go. My poison is like really low right now, right? And Aether is also like still kind of stuff, uh, scuffed. Hmm. Where can I buy runestone again, guys? It's like either here. You can get Aether Soul here. It's either here or it's in a rover or something. Didn't they buff a bunch of items and skills to give you more HP in testing? Uh, yeah, they did actually. See anything you like? Hmm. No. Wait, no. Runestone is probably Homestead, maybe, actually. Or maybe also the Black Legion or the Kaiman's Chosen. Let's see here. Come see what's left. What do we have here? Bloody Whetstone, Leathery Hide, sure. Those are all like usable. Sanctified Bone is good. I could also like just craft a Leathery Hide because honestly my stun rest is really bad and getting stunned uh, well sucks if you're a, like a Eye Reckoning character. Hide, Leathery Hide, right. I need four crystals. I mean, you could farm crystals real quick. I guess... Uh, Warden Slab is not gonna like scale high enough anymore, right? Where do you farm crystals at level 40 then? You can farm crystals I guess at level 40 in the... We could do Conflagration, right? We could do this quest over here real quick. So does cost. Hey, wait, I have 8% Aether Rust though. <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't do this cost. I actually shouldn't do this cost right now, but. I just needed like what four crystals? I think I have enough now. <laughs> Fuck off, Andu. <laughs> Alright, we need to look for Aether resistance, right? We need Aether resistance for sure on any gear like this one, for example. Actually, these are fine already. Apart from movement speed not being there. Fuck. Oh uh, my god. 
Why am I struggling right now on this build? It kind of is weird. So much Chaos Runners, no Aether Runners. I was gonna craft what? I mean, my ring is like so bad, right? Okay, who am I respected with? Like, Solal? Homestead? Don't they have like rings that they sell, maybe? Or is it only at Honored? Come see what's left of my wares. Mm hmm. And there's harvest foot guards, but like those have low armor already. Kind of. And the rings are honored. Hold on, hold on. Why are they like level 4 rings, but you need to be honored? I don't get it. Come see what's left of my wares. Devil's Shoulder Guard. Oh yeah, these are actually really nice. Let's use these. These are perfect. What the hell? Literally perfect. Honestly, like just trying to like buy all these like components. I mean, um, blueprints rather. It's pretty much always worth it to buy all of them all the time. I need more stun rest, but like the belts also sucks though. I'll give you a good price of what I've got left. Alright, let's maybe like try to farm one or two more of those weapons. Because they weren't like that amazing, the ones that I got so far. Right? And before I didn't get Tomb Portal, I did. I think I did go to the tomb though. Or maybe I should. I, mean, I guess I should for the belt, right? Like I need to farm the gargoyle's belt. I need to kill the Kaiman and like get the gargoyle's belt. I don't need poison rest or aether rest for for Kaiman, so it's fine. Just need like fizz rest, which I have 30 now, which is more than zero, and I have more armor than before as well. Because Homestead Rep is easy? Yeah, but it's like still, I don't know, man. Like, it's freaking honor, dude. Hmm. Should we do bounties on normal? Check. I actually want to like switch these around, right? This one on Virus Might and... Maybe this one on Guardians and then like this one of Our Reckoning or something. 1.5 recharge, 1 recharge, hmm. But this one... Stacks and the other one doesn't, like damage-wise at least. I guess. Another charged of wildfire. At least of wildfire has like attack speed, right? That's pretty good. All right. Uh, yep. 
Just farm totems for Praetorian fig. <laughs> Just get Praetorian sub dude. Just get it. Alright, I'll get level 41 real quick and then we change the other weapon and we like change the components real quick as well on the weapons. And then we kill Carmen, right? Here, across the Black Legion. It's a shield, right? And we don't need that dagger. What's this? Chosen Raymond? I mean, whatever. Alright, so, uh, let's remove the component and put it on the new weapon. I'm gonna do a weird even in endgame. Maybe. I don't know, is that bad? I mean, there are some other weapons that you can go for, right? Definitely, like, there are other weapons. Like the, uh... What's it called? Like, the Phoenix-style item? I forgot its name, actually. Yeah, that's the one. That is the one. Alas, Spellblade. Okay, where the frick is the door? It's up here, right? I mean, what other item do you use there? Like, until you get a lot of spell blade, right? Like, Rift Scourge or just, I mean, Rift Claw, rather? Just good, right? Yeah, really good. Damage time was used, retaliation, for example. I mean, the, the Bitcoin version is so great, right? Because you can also just like max the second, right? And like, it's amazing for bad, it's amazing for... Uh, I guess you could even like play Wendigo, right? Like bad Wendigo. Maybe you only play Wendigo later and don't even play bad. I'm not sure actually. Um, and then you also play... Well, I mean, you max out second right if you have the points for it. Yo, feeling good man, welcome to uh, Yeah, this is uh, SSF as well. Like, fresh account. 
fresh save folder rather. Okay, um, Reddick Terror, Terror Reddick, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's true. Like, this thing hits like a lot. Every 0 0.16 sec like, like once every 0 0.16. So let's put it to a like weapon like percent weapon damage per second, right? So uh, let's go to this real quick, right? So what is this? Um, every 0 0.16 seconds at 100% attack speed, attack speed, right? So ideally. So you hit 6.25 times per second, right? With default attack speed. And then if you have max attack speed, you will hit 12.5 times per second. And then this is, I don't know, like what is it like at max 38? 40% maybe? Times 40? Isn't that like 500% weapon damage per second? I mean, yes, that's what it is, right? But 38 max even actually only. So times 38, okay. It's like 475 weapon damage per second. Um, other like default attack builds though have like what three to four attacks per second and have like 150-ish percent weapon damage maybe default. So 150 times, I don't know, three to four times a second is like 400 per second, right? So yes, you have less weapon damage than um, a like standard weapon damage based build. Definitely. Like a default attack build, basically. And yeah, that's also like the reason why you said like, yeah, second right is, I mean, it's okay, it's not too bad, but it's like not amazing either. Right? Okay, Father Kaiman, arguably one of the harder bosses on the campaign here for sure. Uh, let's kill him. I am sorry. I am sorry, my chosen. When he opens his belly, you press ascension. And maybe also like a pot. After that, there we go. Honestly, a normal or like veteran is not that hard. Like later, he can get a lot harder. And my weakness right now is like Aether and Poison Rust, which, well, he doesn't deal any of that, right? So it's fine. And you want to get to the Astral Fields here, not only because of the like Forgotten Gods quest ending here, but also more importantly because there are gargoyles that spawn here that like. I don't know, like flying down from the skies. And those gargoyles drop a belt which you will need to farm. That just gonna suck. To farm probably, but uh, there are some. Our Reckoning can survive Kaiman as long as it's not Cyclone or, or Ground Zero playing it. <laughs> oh. You guys. You found this place too much for the Gargoyles? I mean, at least the place is beautiful, right? Like, it looks so good, I think. It's really nice. 
pretty beautiful. Gargoyle's waist guard and Gargoyle's girdle. Alright, so we got it. We need the girdle. We don't care about the waist guard, we need the girdle. There it is, right? Pierce the fire, which will make Bant even better. Russ one always goes to Oathkeeper. Chaos Russ, Petrify Russ. I mean, Star Lord is like what? Defensive ability, Vitality is like health. Um, we do need health for sure. Um, also, I guess it has Chaos Resistance again, which we don't need. But... Oh well. Could be worse, I guess. Could be worse. That's fine, I guess. Come, little human. I will make this quick. He will make this quick. I'll go take forever to spawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Alright, the core rock. You're gonna die today, or rather, your manifestation is gonna die today. Yeah, I'm shackled. Uh, we need to still like, since we're not using Judgment yet, we need to use Fire Smite and Fire Trail to like keep um, those bad Twin Fangs spawning. Like, rocking rather. So we're gonna like put a Fire Trail like, below him at all times. Right? Here. Do I need any of this? Diadem, Holberg, Tower Shield. I mean, maybe the. I certainly don't need this or this. Okay. Are there any enemies, uh, enemies that reduce poison resistance? Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure there are. There are also like enemies that just like reduce all resistances oh, across the board, has... and then uh... I'll give you a good price, yeah. If you're getting hit by a poison mob after that, you're still gonna have a bad time, right? Dude, how are all these rings so bad? 
And I guess we have to like get some good living rings in, in my ancient grove. Or like in the Udenborg. To finally get some usable rings. Start with the vitality. Here we go, right? Zoop. And uh, let's go to the crossing, or rather, see anything you like. See you around. Did I do all the quests here? Did I also like hand in the quests here? No. I didn't do the messenger quest return yet. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. Uh actually we didn't do strange key dungeon, right? I thought I was I'm gonna do it, but I didn't. Oh well. Baited. I'm sorry. I mean, it's like a dungeon, like a side dungeon, like around here. That right now I'm like out skating hard, but if you're like still in Act 1, which probably aren't at this point of the video, um, then you could do it, right? Like right now it's like kind of pointless. Anyway, keep the add on, put the poison thing there. We got another plus one all skills to Oath Keeper, which means like more points to our reckoning, which means more damage. Um, also, I believe we're gonna keep this at 12 for now, right? Like, you can see, like, these kind of skills, like, if you do 2% RR up to 12, and then it's only, like, 1%. Um, later on, in endgame, in endgame, I would say, like, maxing out this is still worth it. But for now, let's keep it at the soft cap, right? Like, the value point. Same pro for presence of virtue, right? Let's keep it at the value point. So, like, 12 here, 12 here. And we can, like, max out Divine Mandate instead. With Divine Mandate, however, you just want to like max it out because it like actually scales well after the so-called like soft caps, so, like 12 out of 12 as well, right? And after we max this out, we're just gonna like go into the Ocultus tree and basically like push this all the way to Aspect of the Guardian. Right. Get the points in Blood Dragon, Aspect of the Guardian. Get like maybe one point in the second right at least, or like more depending on like how much vitality resistance we need. And um yeah, then like one point curse of reality and maxing out vulnerability as well for like a meta resistance reduction. That is kind of going to be the plan here for the world, and also eventually I might use a judgment as well as a proper slash defensive ability reduction ability. But yeah, other than that, I think that's gonna be it for me for this episode today. I kinda did like Act 1, 2, 3 and Forgotten Gods, like Act 7 as well, I guess. All of that is finished. I did do a couple of things in Act 4 here, but like, this is not really like much that I did here, like story-wise. Basically nothing, right? I haven't even made it to Fort Icon. And I should've kinda like not done this because like, I was kinda weakish here and like, I almost died to Yeti here because I wasn't like paying attention properly. Um, that shouldn't happen, like, really. That shouldn't happen. Anyway, uh, yeah. 50k DPS seems fine for level 41, I would say. Bell is doing fine. It's looking a little weird. But there is also the illusionist if you don't like how your character is looking like, right? You can change the appearance of your character here. I don't know. Whatever your jam is, right? I feel like I have no good chests so far, but these three actually like gloves, shoulders, and I haven't actually fit really well together. Boots are kind of hmm. Oh, well. Also, like don't do like too much MTX, uh, <laughs> or like rather free MTX, like illusionist visual changing because it does cost iron bits. Like it's negligible at end game, but. I mean, it's also, I guess, kind of negligible, neg negligible right now as well. And maybe I'm gonna try out flame brands as well. 
But honestly, I mean, they are good, right? But honestly, Rift Claws Lancers are just better because MIs are just, in general, really, 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 really strong in this game. Especially when they, like, add flat damage to your main damage ability. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you around the next one. Take care.